See, this, this is why I need I need the women. I need the women, chat. I need a woman. I need help. <laughs> Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content on my YouTube channel here, Class in a Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and video casts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. And I'm going to answer these in the order which I have received them, with the exception of Carmen Hazel, because she likes to go last. Yeah, she just likes to have end it with a big, you know, big finale. You know, a big boom. A big boom, Chad, if you will. So, we're going to start with Vanny Vanisphere. Chad Vanisphere, thank you for being a juicy game subscriber. I do appreciate that, good sir. And he says, sorry, I'm going to read him. I'm going to read him how he wrote him, Chad. Sorry, I know this is super late. No problem. Let's go Super Mario Bros. this week. A lot of Vanny's questions are themed around something. This week, it's Super Mario Bros. I like that. Movie question. The Super Mario Bros. film is infamous for its awfulness. Perhaps its greatest sin is that it strays so far away from the source material that it was like watching a Goomba's Coke hallucinations. And it's generally difficult to think of nice things to say about the film. Good thing I don't have to. Last time I checked, this was Classic Glass Class and not Vanny. Anyway, <laughs> not the Vanny show, as he says. Anyway, that uh, what are anyway what are three good things about the Super Mario Bros. movie? So, Chad, in case you don't know, Super Mario Bros. You know, we react to the trailer. Some of you might not be familiar with the Super Mario Bros. movie, Chad. Gentlemen, oh, says I love the movie. Okay, yeah, it's a cult film. It does have its fans, which is true. I got the power. Yes. You know, some people um, uh, grew up watching this movie, so we really like it. It's a long fucking trailer, too. But let's go ahead. We'll watch the Super Mario Bros. trailer, chat. And I'll, exp and I'll pick three good things from this movie. Maybe even more than three. You never know. All right, God of War, get the fuck out of here. I'm done with you. I'm done with you, fat Thor. I'll see you in 2022. Let's go ahead and react to this little trailer here, chat. Let me help me find some good stuff. 1993. Brought to you by the Sphinx. There you go. Taking sweet fucking time. A lot of people worked on this movie. Another dimension. Oh, as you all know, Chad, you just love putting fucking um, plungers on your wall. Gross. No, no, no. Don't touch it. No, no, it's not a big problem. Just leave it to the professionals. We'll be right there. Luigi. Luigi. We got a broken I love me some Bob Hoskins, Chad. I'm a big Bob Hoskins fan. You know what fan. that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Mike. Great actor, Chad. Was a great actor. It was a day in the life of the Mario Bros. Awful fucking trailer, by the way. Is this the trailer I want? Where's the I got the power? They're taking their sweet fucking time. How do you know? I've been listening to pipes on my life. Come on. Oh! <laughs> that thing come on the wall. Steve. That has no spoon. Who puts plunges on the wall? It doesn't make any sense. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank you, Steve, for resubscribing. Where's the I got the power? We gotta talk to that goofball now. Yeah. Dennis Hopper losing his. This is fan made? Oh, I don't want no goddamn fan made. Get out of here. I was like, why this fuck is. I want me not Chad. No, 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 no. I, I, I got the power. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I was like, what? why is this taking so fucking long? They have the goddamn point. All right, Daisy, get the fuck out of here. No, we gotta, we gotta go ahead. We gotta go ahead and get the. I got the power. Thank you, Chad. Ah! Meteorite. There you go. There you go. The present. Jesus. For the love of God, just play the fucking trailer. There you go. There you go. Took so long. Fuck. Here we go. Just what I'm talking about. Where are we? 
got a feeling we're not in Brooklyn no more. <laughs> Trust the fungus, man. Trust the fungus. Shot on the trail of a kidnapped princess. No, she's horrifying. That gives anyone who possesses it the power to rule the universe. Get me the rock. Don't get it, lizard breath. Must rescue the princess. Yes! God, it's fucking scary when it comes out of the wall. And make it safely back. Later, alligator up to our world. Oh, are you alright? Before time runs out. Woo! Good song choice. It's like a Mad Max movie. Jesus, who is this for? Super Mario Bros. What, what's happening? This ain't no game. <laughs> this ain't no game, chat. It's not. Uh, this movie has some interesting. Oh, the behind the scenes of this film are fucking fascinating. Like, Bob Hoskins, oh, this part of my, my answer, but Bob Hoskins, like, when the detail about the film, it's really fascinating. Here's perspective about him and John Guizamo, who play Mario and, and Luigi, respectively. Like, they were drunk on set. Just to get through the day, they would just drink heavily. And they were intoxicated during a lot of their scenes. I think it's very amusing. That's so fucking funny. Uh, did someone uh, die? Bob Hoskins passed away a number of years ago. He passed like what, in 2015, I want to say, 2014. So he, he did pass away. He played, he played Mario. But uh, back, to, back to Vanny's question. So I want to give you some context there. Chad. There was the trailer. And he has, he has, he's just asking me, anyway, what are three good things about the Super Mario Bros. movie? And I, I, I have to say, at the top, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, Bob Hoskins to a better, to a, a better degree, a larger degree. I, they're not bad in the film. Like they are trying to, they are carrying this movie. Chat. They are given the Leviathan task of, you know, the Leviathan sized task of carrying this on their shoulders. And despite the awful material, I, I do think that there is effort being put in on their part. I recognize, I can recognize that. I can recognize that, and I think they're doing the best that they absolutely can. If I had to pick, like, the best actors in the film, it's probably them. It's probably them. It's like, I think they're – no, it's not – You know, it's a good point because I think I'm like, okay, I can kind of see, like, yeah, Bob Hoskins is Mario. I was like, yeah, Jungle Zamo. Like, man, I don't really see that. But I'm like, okay, I can see him as Luigi. And they're not bad together at all. Like, there is chemistry. It's just the material and the direction of the movie is so bad. That's just what it is. But – Despite everything of how awful that movie is, and it is, Chet, it's rough. I've done a review for it, and I've gone to detail, and it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, they are probably the best things about it in terms of the story and the characters. You know, you do get a sense of, of, of chemistry between them. But just $43 million, they spent money on this, so they ran out of money by the end because it was so mismanaged. They had a whole third act plan that just went completely awry, you know. Uh, they, 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 they were, and it was a box that was bombed. Only, I think it made like $38 million, so it didn't do very well. But they put money into this. Like, the studio's like, all right, we believe in this. We're hoping for the best. But, you know, it was so mismatched. No one knew what they, was do they were doing. That's what Bob Hoskins pretty much said. And I have a quote from Hoskins because he, he's talked about it. Like, this is before he, he, he passed. Because I think, I think he had dementia or Alzheimer's, like, la later in his life. Like, in, the, I think, maybe like two or three years before he died, sadly. Um, but he did. He had a great interview. Uh, and I love this, where he was asked, what's the worst thing you ever did as an actor? And I love this quote. It's like, this is one of the great quotes, I think, from Bob Hoskins. And it's like, it perfectly encapsulates his experience on this film. And he says, the worst thing I ever... Thank you, no one, for the one minute. Happy to see you back streaming. Hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the night. Thank you, no one. No, I, it's an absolute pleasure. Happy to have you back here. Cheers and salute to you. Sleep well. Enjoy your evening. Mm. But... This is, this is an absolute fucking gr a, gr a great quote for him. He says, The worst thing I ever did, Super Mario Brothers. It was a fucking nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. I had a husband and wife team directing whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. After so many weeks, their own agent told them to get off the set. Fucking nightmare. Fucking idiots. <laughs> I'm like, that's worth it for that movie. That movie's 
that movie's existence is worth it just to get Bob Hoskins, that Bob Hoskins quote. That is definitely one of the best things that come from this film. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> He's like, yeah, Bob Hoskins, Charlie Guzman in the movie, but also that quote. Absolutely brilliant. I, I just love how honest he is. <laughs> it's perfect. Another one, chat. The saying of trust the fungus. So uh, the, the filmmakers and the studio behind Super Mario Bros., they were hoping that trust the fungus would catch on as a saying like, the, uh, may the force be with you. Like from stars. That's what they were hoping. Like, trust the fungus. And trust the fungus is said throughout the film because you never believe you just trust the fungus. This, this disgusting a fungus blob that is existing in this world where dinosaurs evolved in the people. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it is. It's it's covered this city. And it's actually like King Toad. I think it's Toad King Toadstool, right? And he's become this blob monster because he was trans because he his fucking I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Like his ancestors were fungus mushrooms and so but then he's like a person and they did devolved him to that point part of the fucking story it doesn't make any goddamn sense but it like covers it and everyone's telling him like trust the fungus because the fungus is king toadstool and i just love that they legitimately fucking thought that that would be as iconic as a line as may the force be with you and like i just just the gall just the i guess the arrogance as bob hoskins would say that that just amuses me i got the fungus Ooh, don't say that to a lot of people though Trust the fungus. <laughs> so definitely a, uh, a an iconic line from the movie chat. And third one, Dennis Hopper's cornrows. That man was given so much fucking hair gel to have those disgusting. I mean, not, they're not even really cornrows. They're not really cornrows. Um, I mean, it, it, they just kind of took sections of his hair and just fucking just put a big just glop of hair gel on his head every single day until it just all dried and almost like calcified. But just that, that hair, so I'm like, wow, you, you they committed to it. He had that hair style the whole fucking day. Like, they're like mini hawks. Yeah, they're not, people always say they're corn roasts. They're like, they're like little crusty, blonde, crusty mini hawks. That's what they really are actually like. So, and just that, because it's such a fucking weird design for King, King Koopa, Bowser, if you will, chat. And he, he becomes his dinosaur form later on, but he doesn't look like Bowser. But he's just, he's just, a, he's just like a weird, crusty, hair gel using, like, business night tycoon in the movie. Cornfo. Oh, I love it. Cornfo. Very nice. Very nice. So those are the positives. <laughs> and I guess the song, it did have a good soundtrack. I got the power. Good, good, good song. Like, I got a power up, if you will. So I dug that. Although I think the movie is probably better than Meet the De Deedles. I've never seen that one. I'm not familiar with that film. Mm. I just got off work having buffalo chicken pizza. Nice coming in. And brownies from down. What? Got some brownies? Nice. I'm going to be having some chicken later on. Some chicken. Some broccoli and black beans. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Yes. If uh, you use product and can describe your hair as crusty, you went too, you went too far. And his hair was crusty. It's like Jesus. Goddamn. Forever Storm, welcome to stream. Hope you're doing very well. Talking about Dennis Hopper's crusty hair in the Super Mario Bros. movie. That's one of the positive. Did I hear Pesto? Pesto will be on it. That's true, Naya Pesto. I didn't want to say it because it will be made fun of by either you or Josh. Uh, but I'll be using some red tomato pesto on my chicken later. It'd be delicious. A little bit of lemon on the broccoli and some black beans. Cannot wait to eat. It'd be delicious, Joe. But those are definitely my three favorite things. Bob Hoskins, I mean, you guys four. Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, Hoskins' incredible fucking quote about the movie, which I think is very concise about his experience. Trust the fungus. That line is hilarious that they actually thought it was going to be like, may the force be with you. And Dennis Hopper's cornrows. His crusty, not really cornrows, more like faux hawk, if you will. Faux rose, as it was called. And now, we have a TV question from Vanispheres. While the film was terrible, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show was kind of amazing with Lou Albano's live action skits. I never really watched it. I've seen clips of this, but I never watched it in, like, you know, an actual episode. There are even guest appearances from Ernie Hudson, and I think Elvira. That sounds right. If you were a guest on the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, what would have been the story that would warrant such an appearance? I would like where it was focused on Italian foods, chat. And we would battle each other for money. And so whoever would get hit with the most food, you know, or whoever had, like, maybe, like, the least food on them, whoever, like, like really messed someone up with just, like, a bunch of Italian food, like, fucking Big Ziti and spaghetti and lasagna chat and the gobble ghoul, and we just throw this at each other. Who was, like, voted, like, the best Italian boppity boop fighter 
they would be given like a, the biddies and stuff. We would do it for money, Chad. I would do it for money, okay? And whoever be voted on as the, as the best fighter, they would get all the biddies. And I would call it the Gabagool Gauntlet, Chad, where we just throw Italian cuisine all over each other. So we rub it over each other's bodies like ricotta cheese and cannolis and all that shit. And it's just so stereotypical and like, not borderline offensive, Chad. It is offensive. I mean, because we're just destroying all that wonderful Italian food. You know, we're just throwing at each other's corporeal forms. But I would call it the Gabagool Gauntlet, and we would just vote on who's the best Gabagool uh, competitor, and they would get all the biddies and money. That would be my dad. Was so much, a lot of salt. There's a lot of salt. You got to be careful. You can prepare Italian food, but you can, you know, a lot of carbs. Carb heavy. Very carb heavy. But you can, you know, you can, there's alternatives. The Italian cuisine. Very delicious, though. I'm a big pasta guy, but I, I got to be careful how much I eat. RNJ, thank you so much for subscribing. What's up, Chris and Chill Bowls? Well, I'm just talking about the Gabagool Gauntlet. I'm doing very well, man. Good to see you. Hope you're having a very nice day. Me. Yay. They should do a Marvel cooking game where the face off against the characters. That'd be great. I'm surprised they haven't done something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Gabagool Gauntlet. That's exactly what I, that's what I Yahoo! Gabagool! <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see Mario do that. That'd be fucking hilarious. Yes. <laughs> I'm the wiener. Exactly. So that, the gobble go gauntlet where we just throw fucking Italian cuisine at each other. And who's ever the best person at throwing Italian food at whoever is the winner. Very simple. Very simple. Very true. And we all say boppity boopy. Boppity boopy when we find out who the winner is, chat. Speaking, sprecking that Italian, chat. That beautiful romantic language. And now, chat, we can move on to Vanny's next question. A video game question, chat. Squigilly. To quote New Jack City, Squigilly, Squigilly. <laughs> Toad's voice in the show is hilarious and accurate. Hi! How, what does he sound like in the show? Because I always think of, like Toad's voice, like, Hi! How you doing? And, like, it's always like a scream. Like, he's always, no matter what he's doing, he's always screaming. It's high pitched. Kind of got like a growl to it, too. Hi! I'm Toad! Like, that, that's just how I always picture Toad sounding. Like, it's everything. Everything's pretty close. Okay, fair enough. There you go. But now, Joe, we have a video game question from Vanny Vanispheres. When you stop and really think about it, Super Mario Bros. general concept sounds like a fever dream. You're not right. You're not wrong. You're not wrong, Vanny, at all. It's about an Italian plumber, a stereotypical Italian plumber from Brooklyn that was sent to the Mushroom Kingdom to save Princess Toadstool from King Bowser Koopa, a humanoid lizard from its army of evil shrooms and turtles. You're not wrong. What other games can you think of that has a batshit concept when you really think about it? Yeah, I mean, really, Mario is fucking weird. Like, the whole idea, it's like, it's an Italian plumber and you're battling evil turtles and shit. It's like, yeah, it is. Like, it's it's because I think we're just so used to it. We don't often think that Mario is weird. It's like, oh, Mario, okay, everyone knows Mario. But it's like, yeah, when you sit back and go like, this is a fucking weird concept. The whole conceit of it. So definitely, totally, totally agree. Did I say Brooklyn? I said Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I have been drinking. <laughs> Mickey Mouse on crack meth. Yes, that's what I think of Toad. Very good, very good. Um, I think several games came to mind. I'm sure you guys have some answers as well. No way here is pretty sad. Yeah, it's a good one, Winfox. Very good suggestion. Very good suggestion. I think for myself, I'd have to say, I am bread. The whole conceit of that game is that you play a slice of bread whose quest is to be toasted, where you apparently have, you have sentience, but you only have the insatiable desire to toast yourself. And so you control the bread going from place to place, going through an obstacle like a kitchen or a bathroom or wherever the fucking toaster may be, Chad. You never know what the scenario is. And you go inside and you toast yourself, but not too much so you burn yourself or not too, you know, you, you, you want to get like that proper crunch, but not till you're burnt. You don't want to, you know, be soft. You're like, oh, not enough toast. But it's, it, the whole objective is just to toast yourself because that's all you have. Even though you're sentient, you still have the desire to reach your maximum ultimate fucking form of toasted. And I'm like, all right, I like that. Trying to get double toasted, exactly. You don't want to, I mean, you don't want to get triple toasted. Double toasted, yes, that's fine. But yeah, I Am Bread is such a weird concept, and that took like, you know, when it came, originally came out, everyone was playing it on Twitch and things and YouTube, there's YouTube compilations. It's a funny game. It's a very funny game. Um, so definitely I Am Bread is up there for me. That's one of the first, that's one of the first things that came to mind. Well, I mean, the fact that that was so, it was such a fucking, you know, uh, uh, seemingly like kind of simple concept and the it made the creator millions of the, the team millions of dollars so, hey good for them um another one chat is among the sleep if you don't know it i'll go ahead and explain it where, where 
you, it's a horror game, and you play a baby or a toddler. No, I mean, you legitimately play a baby. And you're being taken care of by your mother, and you befriend this, this little teddy bear who starts talking to you, and he's there to protect you, and you go on a little adventure. But then things start to get a little twisted and dark, and you're running away from these scary things and these entities that want you, and they're saying all these weird things. And by the end of the game, you realize that the baby, it was just their little fantasy world to deal with the physical and emotional abuse of the alcoholic mother and how they've just been abusing the baby for this entire time. This is the baby's way of coping with it. Uh, and then you're eventually taken by your father to hopefully a better life. But that's the whole fucking conceit of that game. Uh, Brightburns, happy birthday. Hope you're doing very well, man. Pleasure to have you here, Brightburns. Um, so definitely that one is big. That one is big for me. I mean, it, the whole thing is like, oh my God, it's about my abusive alcoholic mother who fucking slaps me around and shit and is emotionally abusive and ignores me. And as I had to go with my dad. So that one is definitely not a great game, honestly, like just to play. I, I've, I've streamed that game. You can check that out on my YouTube channel, Class in a Glass. Uh, but cool, cool idea. Cool idea. Maybe just not very fun to play. Uh, another one, Chad, is uh, Katamari Damasi. Um... Very Japanese game, where the whole concept is you play like a little fairy, like a little creature that basically just ro just is constantly trying to make this giant ball of objects, and you're just pushing this thing, and it wraps up. Sometimes like like it's the smallest thing, you know. You're in a room, and you're wrapping up paper clips and marbles and shit, but then it advances, and you're in the house, and you're doing like the couch and the and the, and the TV just in this giant ball, and you go outside and you start wrapping up cars and people and shit, and then you're in a city, and then you're in countries, and then it's the world, then it's the fucking galaxy, then it's the universe, like that. That's the whole concept of it, where you're just creating this big enough fucking ball, and I guess in a time limit or whatever it might be. Um, and I was like, that is so weird. Uh, but yeah, Katamari Damacy is up there. And, and the last one, which I don't even want to say too much of because it's such a it's such a treat to play, but Doki Doki Literature Club chat where it's a Japanese it's a Japanese virtual novel um, where you join a literature club filled with four girls who really want to get to know who you are. You know, they all have feelings for you and some of them might like you a little bit more than just, you know, wanting to be your friend. They might like really like you. And one of them might be fucking crazy. And it's it's fascinating. It's like it's a game that's like it starts out like, okay, this is a Japanese virtual novel, and it fucking gets weird. It gets scary. It gets disturbing. It becomes like the Matrix. And I'm like, yes. Yes, I love that game. I've streamed that game. Check that one out, chat. Doki Doki. I'm gonna play that again someday. I already know what happens. I I went in that game blind. I loved it. It was so fucking weird. I absolutely loved the chat. So definitely Doki Doki Literature Club is one of the weirdest games I've ever played. Wonderful experience, too. You know, Demasi is the last franchise Namco made before they became Banner. Ah, I didn't know that. Parappa the Rapper, the Rapper. You see, I never played those games. So I, don't, I, try, I try to pick games that I know that I've played. I'm sure there's so many other ones. Yup, literature. Uh, write a poem. Doki Doki Eagle's the best version of it. It probably is. I, I, can, I haven't played enough to say that, but I imagine it is, uh, you know... Well regarded as one of the best, if not the best. So I'm right there with you. Uh, Scylla Beast. Silas, Silas? Silas Beast. Silas Beats. Oh, Silas Beats. Thank you, you're my new Huckleberry. Welcome to stream. Appreciate that. But again, Brightburn, happy birthday to you. If, uh, if you have a song request, give it to Naya. I'll, I'll, I'll serenade you with a song today, perhaps. Bug snacks. Bugs, isn't that where you become food? Like, everything's fucking becoming food and shit? Like, look, my fucking my arm is linguine. And they start eating themselves. Like, that is kind of horrifying to me. I've not played that one, but I could definitely see that being like, it's a weird fucked up game. Definitely. By the way, you remember Mario was named after the Brooklyn landlord, Mario Seagull. I did not. Who owned the apartment the Nintendo team stayed in when they were making duck. I had no idea. I did not. Wow. Holy shit. Like, write poems, you dirty poem boy. That's what they say. That's, that's what they do in the game. They say, me, read my poem. And I was like, ah. What, what, the, what the fuck's the... Who's the... Monica. Oh, I love this poem. It is great. I hope you love it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Deadpool gonna see Octodad as kind of a fever dream about a human woman having kids. That's true. Well, they're, are they his kids? Or are they... Uh, would they have from another relationship? But that's another good one. 
Yeah, where she fought your your octopus trying to be a guy, and your it's your secret. <laughs> we did watch the Matrix Four trailer. We did. Yeah, we were. That was the one of the first things we did in the beginning of the stream. Check out the VOD to hear our thoughts on it. Yeah, he's adopted. Oh, the kids are adopted. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Cool. Very nice, Jeff. Mm -hmm. but those are the four that came to mind to me. Some other good ones here. Octavia, yeah, perfect. I love it, Jeff. I love it. But those are mine. I'll, I'll play some more weird games someday. I've played, uh, at least in terms of the ones I've played on stream. I played Among the Sleep. I played Doki Doki Literature Club. You can both check those out. I have not played I Am Bread on stream. I played the game. I don't think I, don't think I played it on stream. I don't believe so. Maybe I have. I don't remember. Maybe I have. I really don't remember. But uh, Konamari Damasi, I have not played on stream either. It's been a long time since I played that game. Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon. This guy will love me. I'll do that one. Yeah, I can do that one later for you. No problem, man. Yes. Naya! She is the keeper of the song. She'll keep track of it. We have a content creator question from Vanny Vandesphere Shet. Uh, when Paper Mario The Origami King was released, an article came out that revealed that Nintendo has some very strict rules regarding what Mario does and does not do in games. As a content creator, you need to have certain rules for yourself as well to maintain a proper work-life balance and safe relationships between you and us. Where are some of those rules? I mean, no, it's, it's, I've talked about this before. And it's important to have these, these boundaries, chat. Um, I definitely won, and there's something that I need to address, but it's the mailing services and address knowledge. Where people have asked me for my address, they've asked for a PO box. Really, that's what it, what it is. Where so they can send me things, and that's something I definitely need to do. Um, I have given my my address out to certain people, uh, but people I've like I've known for a very 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 long time. Um, but I don't want to just like give my address out there. Nor nor do I think anyone should just give their address out there. I think you know if if you're doing this for a living, you should have like a, a PO box. People can send you stuff because you never know. I mean, not saying that you guys would do this, but. I mean, there is a crazy person. It's something, it could be random. Random person. Because, sadly, you know, um, Double Toasted has received threats from people. Um, whether it be, you know, on social media or, you know, uh, or, you know, I've received threats from people. Um, whether, you know, on social media or Reddit. And so it's that kind of thing where it's like, yeah, I don't want to give that information out willingly. So have like at least a P.O. box that'd be safer so it's not just sent to my address. Like, that's something I think that's a good, that's just a, that's just a generally safe boundary to have. That's what's needed. Because there are, sadly, there are a lot of twisted, fucked up people in this world. And even the Double Toasted Resistance has been going through something, you know, I don't want to get into too many details, but there has been someone who has been making very obvious threats. And it is very concerning. So, yeah, and you, you, just, you just never know. And, uh, but it's one of those things where I do want to set up a P.O. box where I do, if people do want to send me something or whatever it might, or whatever it might be, it's just, I, I'll have that as an option. Make that public. Yeah. Who wants to juicy? Many. <laughs> well, he stalks Chris from afar. Yeah, review that movie, Sonic Boy. Oh, God. Yes, unless you're Corey and you get, uh, Anna Todd's Harry Styles fetch. I hope not. Oh, boy. Last thing we need. Yeah, I never use home address. And that's, 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 that's just, I think that just makes sense. That's reasonable. That's fair. Uh, so I don't want to put that out there. Um, and I, I will, I, I need to create a P.O. box. It's something I was thinking about before. I just, I just need to establish that. I just need to establish that. Um, another thing, chat, and I've talked about this before many times. We've had situations uh, where this has been abused. But mic privileges, where I've had, I've done multiplayer shenanigans. And, you know, when I did Among Us, I had certain people on there. I had a lot of people on there who had a mic. And people abuse that where they... And this is what this is what this is what ended it, and that's why I'm very very strict about who I have on mic. Um, where people used racial slurs, they used homophobic slurs, they were aggressive towards the other players, just generally aggressive, or they were aggressive towards women. And I just I just like I, I can't have this, and that really fucking bothered me. That that was one of the days when I was really fucking mad, and um, those people have been dealt with. And but there's just that that's why I'm just very careful about who I have on mic. You know, not to say that, you know, um, I, I wouldn't have more people in the future, but I'm being very cautious. I'm finding ways to address it and maybe maybe not like on Twitch, but having conversations with people like on mic, but in, like in d different scenarios. As I talked about this before, um, I'm thinking of restructuring. and I probably will. I'll institute this this week, uh, this upcoming week. I'm restructuring the watch parties I do on Discord to be more like book clubs. 
where we would actually discuss the film. Um, you have everyone who has a mic and everyone who's subscribed at that specific tier level come in and we all take turns talking about the film. What we like maybe certain topics we'll go into details about while we play the film in the background on mute. But that'll be more like book club kind of things. And I'm, I'm thinking of like alternate ways where I can have people on mic and I have conversations on them. But that way it would be, and I would record it and things and I'd give it, you know, be available for people on the Patreon eventually be f- for free on YouTube. But like in the moment, like live in the moment, that kind of thing where people are using slurs or terms that I will not fucking tolerate or being aggressive and I will not tolerate that live. Like these are just things that I've, you know, I've come to realize where it's like, I have to have boundaries again. I I can't have certain, I can't have certain people on mic. I can have a lot of people on mic and there's only people I really, 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 truly trust. So that's just, it's kind of how it has to be sadly. And just, and just for the, the control of the content itself. I think that's just been very important. Juicy. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, that graphic novel club. Yeah, I mean, there's certain things. I mean, who knows? Maybe I can do a graphic novel club. I thought of it like doing like kind of like a movie book club at first, but it could morph into other things over time. Maybe I can do comics as well. Um, you know, that's in the road. But I want to definitely start with like the movie thing. That'd be interesting. Go from there. We love you. Thanks for protecting us. And you're like, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's just I can't read. <laughs> that's how we're just going to start with movies. And I feel like doing it that way, and then I can have people. Then that's when people can find like people who want to be on mic, they can be on mic. Obviously, it wouldn't be live. It would be recorded. You know, I would put it out there for people to to listen on Patreon then later on YouTube for free. Um, yeah, after a specific time. But yeah, it's kind of how it has to be because I want I know people want to be on mic. I know people want to talk to me. I totally understand that. I think that's be great. But I got to be careful. I got to be careful. And I feel like if I address it in like in these di- different ways, or I have different avenues which people can pursue and engage, then that would make it a lot easier. Kind of TV show book club. very similar to that. Very similar to that. Yeah, exactly. Oprah's book club. It's like I'm chat. I'm like Oprah. All right. I'm like Oprah. I'm starting my own Oprah book club, except it's movies. It'll be fantastic. So I'm excited to hold on. I might debut it this week. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a post about it probably tonight or Monday about restructuring the watch parties to be more like discussion based. I'll play in the movie in the background. But I think it'll be fun. I think we'll really like that. Um, and the other thing is uh, public engagement. I think, you know. I, I feel like, and this, this goes into the address thing, where I would ha- always happily meet with people, you know, people come to town and hang out with them, get drinks, go to a restaurant, that kind of thing. I mean, it's great. I'm the white male Oprah, all right? I'm the white male Oprah, Chad. Exactly, Deadpool. You can, that will, I would like to use that. That's one of my many titles. White male Oprah, thank you. TM, TM, TM. But, uh, but no, like public engagement, like happily to go out and meet, meet with people. You know, you know, bars or restaurants or movies or whatever it might be. But again, like there has to be that separation where I can't just have people over at my own home. You know, that's 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 the, unless I super 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 trust you. That that, that that's be the only case. You know, where I would allow something like that. But um, but yeah, those are the, those are the three big things. You know, uh, safe public engagement, mic privileges, and mailing service address knowledge. Those are the one things I've always been very mindful of, Chad. I mean, I promise I'll be a good girl. <laughs> yeah, I don't make it. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with that? <laughs> and you want movie to start with? I don't know. I, I might I might do a poll and just get like, um, I'll put a bunch of options on there and have people vote for it. See what see what they're feeling. And we're going Chris, did you hear the Grimace story and what ups on this past week? I did not. I didn't watch it, sadly. You get juicy, and you get juicy. Everyone gets juicy. It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be amazing, chat. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for it. Yeah. But yeah, I hope you understand all those kind of things. I think I think those are reasonable. No. <laughs> no. I think those are fairly reasonable things to have when it comes to streaming or content creation. You know, it needs to be like a little separation. I say I want to engage with people, but I want to do it safely. I want to do it safely. Because it's just, there's been examples where people have abused the, the mic privileges. People have threatened us, you know, and I, you got to be careful. You got to be careful, chat. This is one of those things. Yeah, you guys are amazing, but you never know. You know, I have, I've had people on here who I've, uh, I've been concerned about. Most of them have been dealt with. You know, or like they, they have been dealt with, I should say, they've been dealt with. Well, Skabani McDonald's manager apparently thinks Grimace is taste bud. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's good. Got to do it safe. Got to do it safe. Exactly. Exactly. Especially with the pandemic. That too. That too. Uh, that all, we should all be able to, uh, we should all be able to invade your home anytime we please. No! 
<laughs> I've been shit hangs for all this. That's true. I don't blame you a lot of crazy people. Thank you. Thank you for understanding, Chad. I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Definitely means a lot to me. But now, Chad, will go ahead and move on to Vanny's last question. I mean, he had some bonus questions, but I think they were cut off. There was a weird thing. For whatever reason, Patreon erased Vanny's questions. They were sent to me via email, but they were erased the other way. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, Chad. Deadpool. Question. Since you had issues where people were making threats and you live in Texas, have you considered getting a firearm for self-defense? I have. I have considered that. It's just, you know, I need... I need training. I need training for that. It's, it's just the process of doing that. It's the inconvenience of getting, of actually doing all that. Um, so someday, pro probably, probably, yeah. As as my channel continues to grow and gets bigger, as DT continues to grow, grows and bigger. Yes, we have an incredible community, very supportive people. We just saw that showcase in New York recently, which was I'm so happy that show went so well. Everything I've been hearing, but we also get a couple of crazies. This is something we gotta, you know. Um, uh, prepare for, sadly, sadly, sadly. It's like, I don't want to have to talk about these things, but they are, they're inevitable. Yeah. Yeah, keep it Larry. Good to see you. Hope you're doing very well. Welcome. Welcome. I know I scared you. <laughs> oh, no. No, Glee. You're one, you're one of the good ones. <laughs> very responsible. Thank you. Yeah. I, I try to, I try to be. Yeah. We'll see. But now we're going to move on to Vanny's last question. At least the one that I, I, I could get. The first level to Super Mario Bros. is burned to the brains of every gamer regardless of age. The other Mario games also had absolute banner first level themes. Or just Super Mario Bros. theme aside. What is the best level 1-1 one, one Mario theme? Like, there's so many. But I guess the one that I... I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the one that I distinctly remember. It's like, this is my child in the 90s. And that's Peach's Castle. It's the hub world chat. That level... Uh, in Super Mario 64. And I was like, oh yeah, I fucking totally remember this one. Well, it sounds almost like a little operatic. Um, where it's not really chip tune. It's not like a synthy, it's like a synthy, it's kind of like a synthy version of the Mario score. But this one, chat, from Mario 64, when the game opens up. It's kind of like synths. It's like, whoa, Mario's evolved. Like, this, this was a big thing. It's like a synthy, like, violins and organs. It was definitely, that's the, like, this, this is definitely up there for me. That, that goes on for 30 fucking minutes. This is like an extended version. But whether or not it's the best one, I can't say. But it's the one that I most remember. Because I played a lot of Super Mario 64 back in the day when I had an N64. The nostalgia. It's the nostalgia of it, I think, for me. Definitely the nostalgia of it. Super Mario's 2 so much. There's so many great themes. I mean, Super Mario Bros. in general has, has, has always had great music consistently in multiple games. Very, very good. Very, very good. What kind of threats do you get? Uh, I've had people that said they would physically assault me, that kind of thing. I mean, Corey's gotten people who would said they would kill him. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, execution, public execution type of stuff. Yeah. Hey, just finished watching Malignant Twist. Oh, that's a hell of a fucking twist. We'll talk. I'm gonna talk about Malignant tomorrow. I'm gonna get in nitty gritty details about Malignant tomorrow. I really want to talk about the movie. I'm gonna do a scene by scene by scene <gasps> by scene breakdown of that film. Yeah, I'll kill you. The kindness. That's fine. That's that. I mean, you'll still kill me, which I'm kind of sad about. But other than that, the kindness parts. That's nice. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Just, oh no, no, no. I appreciate. It. No, I, I thank. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Just you know, this is this is what happens. You, you you get people who are obsessive, who are unstable, and they're emotionally stunted, and they that's how they react. That's how they react. We don't know if they would will do these things. You know, like, you know, they will actually uh, act on their threats. But you never know. You gotta be. You gotta be careful. That's you gotta be careful. <sighs> yeah, chat. Sadly. Sadly. But yeah, that, that was the one for me. Sir Mario 64's Peach's Castle theme. It's the one I distinctly remember. I need a haircut. Same, Brent Burns. I need a haircut, too. My hair's getting so I got to grow this for another month and a half. 
so much. I shall watch Malignant tonight. You watch it, watch it. Yeah, no, please do watch Malignant as soon as you can, whether it be in theaters or on HBO Max. That's how I watch it. I watch on HBO Max because I'll be talking about the movie tomorrow. I'll be doing a spoiler review, a scene by scene by scene <gasps> by scene breakdown. So get in there. Do you like the movie? I I I, <laughs> I think Malignant is the best comedy of the year and the worst horror movie of the year. <laughs> I don't want to say more than that. That's all I'm going to say. That's what I said on social media, and I will go into detail as to why I believe that. <laughs> we'll get to it. I'm excited, though. I'm excited. I'm like, now I was like, oh, fuck, I got to talk about this film. Because everyone else says, everyone's talking about Everyone else talking about it. I was like, yes. Rich, I was going to do my Matrix review. I was like, fuck that. Matrix, you, you're, you're Tuesday. Malignant, Monday. Cannot wait for it, Chad. Cannot wait for it. Now, no one's spoiling, no spoiling the movie. No spoiling, not doing it now. Spoilers tomorrow during that review, because I'm going to go into details. I'm going to do my spoiler review, but no spoilers right now. No spoilers right now. Be very careful. Be very careful with that, Chad. I would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Yes. Uh, I haven't seen that movie. Maybe watch Nice. saw the Kate Netflix film. Here. I heard that. I heard that people have been liking that film. It looked good. I haven't seen Malignant. How can I spoil it? Don't do it. Don't do it. Even if you haven't seen it, don't spoil it. Don't speak its name. No, we'll talk about it tomorrow. I'm excited, though. It's going to be a blast. Now, that's that's a good review to uh, come back to, chat. That'll be a good one. And now, fall asleep to, uh, during it, so right until the ending. Right there with you. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I got some thoughts. I have some opinions. We'll get into the nitty-gritty details soon, chat. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, now we're gonna move on to Osnick, Vanis, Fears, Vanny. I, for whatever reason, I don't know why Patreon deleted your questions. They were sent to me via, um, email, but I think some of the bonus ones were cut out. So I can always answer them next time on Classic Glass, so feel free to send those to me anytime. Uh, but now, thank you for being a Juice Game subscriber. And now, Chad, we're gonna move to Osnick's questions. Osnick, thank you for being a Revenite subscriber. Question one from Osnick. Question one of the announcement of both Insomniac Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. What other Marvel characters should they make a video game about? I picked three characters, chat. I feel like would they're deserving of a game. And uh, and they're very different from each other. I think that'd be really cool. Number one, I would absolutely love a Doctor Strange game, chat. We don't get a lot of representation of the magic users from Marvel chat, but I think like a third person action adventure Doctor Strange game where you're going to like different dimensions and you're using different spells to fight all sorts of demons and Cthulhu monsters and, and magic based Marvel villains would be awesome. I would love it if someone like uh, Sony Santa Monica so say if I gave this to a developer, Sony Santa Monica are the makers of the, of the God of War series, chat, and doing God of War. They just they did God of War 2018. They're doing God of War Ragnarok. Like, if their next project after, you know, like God of War Ragnarok, they take a little break from God of War, like, okay, let's let it rest. I would love it if they did a Doctor Strange game. That would be so cool to me. Uh, yeah, where it's, it's fairly, uh, it's like, it's, it's linear-esque, but it's like kind of, op but still has a little bit of open-worldness to it, but kind of done the same way as God of War, where you can go to all these different locations, but you're still having this really cool epic story going to all these different realms. I feel like they would be kind of perfect for that. And so I would absolutely love, number one, number one on my list is a Doctor Strange game, because I would really like to delve into the magic of Marvel. I think got a couple of little different kind of spells you can use, elemental spells and everything we've seen, like the whole, like, you could, like the whole traversal system uh, for it. You could, like, fast travel would be like the ring. Well, it would be like the goddamn ring he uses and stuff and you can create multiple versions of yourself and they're, they, they like, you know, they can be very familiars and they can attack and you can move around. You can blast them with ice or fire or whatever the fuck else he uses. I think that'd be so cool. Like, Doctor Strange game would be lit, be fire and green. So, Doctor Strange is like number one on my list. I think they'd be really awesome. They're like Portal. It could be like Portal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Portal. Um, with his, his sling ring, the sling ring. So, get, get me a Doctor Strange game. Definitely number one. Uh, another one I think would be really cool, Punisher. Now, Punisher has had some games over the last few years, chat. Some of the, actual, the last Punisher game I played, it was I, I really enjoyed it. I think it was like 2004, 2005. It's around the time with the Thomas Jane movie, and they, where they incorporated some of that movie's story into the game. But I think it would be really cool to see like a third-person shooter, Gears of War-esque Punisher game made by the Coalition, who are the current developers of the Gears franchise, chat. They've, they've done Gears of War 4, and they've done Gears 5. And I really like what they've done with the Gears franchise. I, I like both of those. I know Gears 4 kind of has like a little bit of like, eh, it's all right. I really love Gears 4. I think Gears 5 was excellent. I think Gears 5 is very, very good. 
Um, and so if they were to do like a Punisher game, hell fucking yeah. Could totally see them doing something like that. I like that that they're that cover based shooter. The gears were so meaty. It's got that that, that just the, the meanness and the crunchiness and the, and it feels kinda like it has that snappiness. It's that it's that meaty kills. You like I just love when you just feel the bullets going into the meat, the chainsaw and stuff like that. You can imagine the, the punisher using fucking melee weapons as well. I just like I feel like they would understand how a Punisher game would need to feel. And I like the idea of Frank Castle snapping the cover, you know, while fighting hordes of like enemies or gangsters or or like a like a guerrilla army or something like that. It'd be awesome to me. Yeah, that, that Punisher PS2. That was a game I was thinking. I like that game a lot. Mm. Mordecai. Thank you for the Timothy. Hey Chris. I had to pull out a uh, Patreon for a bit. I have to start saving up for my moves soon. Oh, that's okay, Mordecai. No problem at all. Totally understand, my friend. I get you. I get you. Well, thank you for letting me know. Thank you for letting me know. No problem at all. It happens. You got to do what you got to do. Thank you for your patronage. I will uh, still uh, do what I am obligated to do for you in the meantime. So don't you worry about that. But thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, think of the Timothys, too. I totally understand. Uh, what was I going to say? Daredevil game. I always love a Daredevil game. I, I, da I, I would love a Daredevil game, but I feel like it would be very similar to Arkham, which is fine. I t I'm totally okay with that, like a Daredevil Arkham-style game. But, uh, but yeah, that'd be cool. I'm, I'm right there with you, Wind Fox. Uh, and then my third one would be a Black Panther open-world game. And so it's, like, all over Wakanda. So think of, like, uh, Black Panther... But maybe it's kind of done the style of like Ghost of Tsushima. And my obvious developer for that would be Sucker Punch, who recently did Ghost of Tsushima. They did the Infamous series. And so you get to travel all around Wakanda. You have the main Wakandan city, but you have all those other districts, all those other places, like from all the other tribes and stuff. Like you have, what's his name? Um, the, uh, the, oh God, what, what, what's he called? Um, Umbaku. Like you can have that area, which is like the northern winter area. Like I think that would be really cool. And he can be open world and get all the different suits and upgrades. You can traverse the city and stuff. And maybe like Wakanda's being invaded by Doctor Doom or Namor or something like that. Which I guess might be the premise of Black Panther uh, 2. So that would be definitely high in my list. I think th those are the big three. Like Doctor Strange, third person action adventure by Sony Santa Monica. All the magic bullshit. Love that. Magic shit, as Corey would say. Punisher, third-person shooter, Gears of War esque, made by the Coalition, the currently makers of the Gears of War franchise, and a third-person open-world Black Panther game made by Sucker Punch. who recently did Ghost of Tsushima, and also did Infamous. That would definitely be uh, with me. That those are my ones. So, money, thank you so much for the four biddies. Appreciate that, my friend. Squirrel Girl game again. Squirrel Girl. Was the versus doesn't be Picard? Yeah, this is like him all fucking moving around and shit, and like moving on physical because he's very agile. You can have you know grappling hooks and all that. You can like expand like uh, Black Panthers. You could have vehicles. You can have like the fucking like hover vehicles and shit that they have in Wakanda. Yeah, like multiple ways. You can multi multiple ways to move around as Black Panther. That'd be cool. Wakanda forever. Indeed. Indeed. And Xavier, after playing the War for Wakanda expansion for Avengers, Chris and Nemec should do a full on Black Panther game. You really like, yeah. A lot of people like the Avengers and the Avengers game. Bethesda makes Black Panther. Uh, look here. I want a Doctor Doom Lat a Latvia simulator. That's like AJ. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. That would be interesting. Yeah, I never thought about that. Like, yeah, like uh, and yeah, an uh, Age of Empires RTS or Civilization where you have these different countries uh, that like notable villains control. That would be it, that's interesting. Yeah, you can have like Wakanda. Like you think of the ones that you would. Yeah, that'd be really interesting to me. Like you can have lot. Yeah, Doctor Doom's Latvia, of course. Namor would be Atlantis. Uh, T'Challa would be. Wakanda, Mandarin, you and it would be his organization. Maybe you know parts of China. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Maybe the like, kingpin for America or something. Like, yeah, there's a lot of different options you can do with that. That'd be that'd be really interesting. That'd be really fucking interesting. Yeah. We need a new Deadpool. Game. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of High Moon Studios Deadpool game. I love that game. Super, super underrated. Super underrated. Um, I would love another Deadpool game. Yeah, be cool. Ghost of Tsushima, hell fucking yeah, Ace Rock. Body Rock, don't stop. Good to see you, Ace Rock. Thomas, hope you're doing well. Good to see you. That's a good idea, though, look here. I like that idea. I never thought of that. It never occurred to me. So, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Punisher, which Punisher movie do you think comes close to being good? Uh, Thomas Jane. I actually like the Thomas Jane Punisher movie. It's not great. It's not perfect. It's flawed, but I think it's, I think that's the best one. Yeah. Definitely not the Love Longer, and I don't like the other one they did. 
Punisher War Zone, or whatever it's called. Hey, the Avenger with Wakanda DLC is cool. You like that one? I like the thing that's strange. The boss fight, Monster Volume 3, and you can play him. That's neat. Some city style game, but you're doomed trying to manage. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I gotta go with Thomas Jane. I, I, was, I wasn't a fan of Warzone. That 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 other one. And then the one with Thomas Jane, you know. Uh, RNG, I'm surprised there isn't a Deadpool game development at the six of the movies. Yeah. Well, man, who knows? Maybe I think I think now that Disney has a better idea what it knows to do with its licenses. Because they fucked up initially with Star Wars, the Star Wars license, just giving it to one publisher in EA, and EA just completely mishandled that. We got some good games from it. Like, Jedi Fallen Order is excellent. You know, Star Wars Battlefront 2 eventually got good. But there was a lot of missteps, a lot of canceled fucking projects. Talk to Visceral. <laughs> Talk to a number of those other studios. And it's uh, it's disappointing. So, uh, But yeah, that, the, but Disney's doing the right thing of, let's just get the license out to multiple people. So, man, it's working out for them. You know, I may not like all the games. You know, I, I was not a big... When I played the Avengers game, I, didn't, I just don't like that style of game. I don't like those live service-esque looter shooter type of things. Like, there, maybe there's a couple exceptions like Borderlands, but it's not my... I just didn't like the gameplay. I didn't like the game, the grindiness of it. Yeah. I'm surprised there isn't a Deadpool game. Oh, I'm sorry. I just read that. Yes, yes. I agree. Thank you. Uh, just pull. I like that. I am playing Guardians of the Galaxy next month. We'll get give it a chance. Like, cartoon series has Will Ferdell as Star-Lord in cartoon. You know, the more I see of that game, the more I'm like, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I really want to wait for reviews of this, of that one, because they actually showed that at the Sony Showcase again. And the more I'm saying, I'm like, yeah, I'm just not really digging this. We'll see. I, it's, it's being made by Idos Montreal, right? Who are the makers of the Deus Ex series, the rebooted Deus Ex series? So, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. How can you not love the Punisher blowing up a parkour do? <laughs> I remember that scene. He just, like, puffed in a fucking cloud of smoke. Like, there's no body parts. There's no blood. Just poof. <laughs> I do not like the Parker scene more. So I like it, though, for not the reasons I think the filmmaker intended. <laughs> Marvel Illuminati game lately. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a good idea. That's some good ideas here, chap. And that didn't, no, I like the idea of a Marvel, like, Civilization or Age of Empires s game where you control these notable Marvel figures and their countries or their territories. That's really interesting to me. I like that. Juice Wars. I really like it. I'm calling Mar Marvel Illuminati. Yeah, I like that a lot. Juice Front Two is all right. Juicy Front Two, Battlefront Two. Uh, it got it got better. It got better. I didn't even play the story. No, did I play the story mode? No, I didn't. I didn't. I just played the multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Lester, it's just I just I just don't like La La Lester. I just don't like it. I don't know. If there's been a live service game that I that I've enjoyed. I can't think of one. I think I've been disappointed by all of them. Because Borderlands is that's more of a looter shooter. I mean, there's live. There's not that's not on live service. This is a co-op, you know, looter shooter. Um, that's why I'm very concerned about massive entertainment's um, Star Wars game. You know, they're the makers of the Division series, which I like the idea of the Division. I think it's really cool. I just hate the I hate the gameplay. I really dislike the gameplay. I hate the mission structure. Um, and so they're and then they're doing that Avatar game, which I'm like, who the f I just don't want that at all. And the fact they're making a Star Wars game, which is gonna be open world, it's gonna have the same. I was like, ugh. ugh. And it's gonna be a live service Star Wars game, which I know Ubisoft wants and Disney wants. I get the allure of that, but yeah, not for me. Not for me. Not for me. Yeah, you can only play Star Wars in the game. That's correct. But I still have to put me funny. It's it's it, I go back and forth with Borderlands humor. Sometimes I like, sometimes I don't. Depends. It's, very, it's hit and miss. It's hit and miss, Joe. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad, no, I'm, I am glad. I'll say that. I'm glad Guardians is not a live service game. That's fair. That's fair. Hmm. Uh, do you think it might be possible that non-Marvel characters appear in Multiverse of Madness like Jack Sparrow? In the movie, Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness? I would say no. I don't think so. I feel like the multiverse will be just more like alternate Marvel. I, I bet Evil Dead... I will say... I think we're going to get like alternate takes on different Marvel characters in Doctor Strange's The Multiverse of Madness. You know? Maybe we'll see some of those what-if characters in there. I would not be surprised if they're in there. That would... I'd be like, all right. Like Agent Carter. I would not... Hey, like that's the one I'm like... Captain Carter, I think, would, will show up in Doctor Strange. If I had to take a guess, like something like that, definitely. Sam Raimi, I think, will will showcase Evil Dead. I don't know the licensing issue, who owns what, but 
I would not be shocked if we get like a little cameo of, of Ash, like because he loves Bruce Campbell, always cameos in at least a lot of his movies. And if they want to showcase Ash in that way, that'd be fucking interesting to me. I think that would be cool. It was just boring. Yeah, I just don't care for it. Yeah, there's at least one genre of video games that we don't we, we all don't like. Yeah, problem the division is everything is bullet. Yes, it's the I hate the fucking it's the bullet spongy, the bullet sponginess, and all the guns feel the same. And I'm just like I hate that. I hate that. It's awful. That's your public agreement should be cool. I'm very excited about that. The chat attack, Mr. Diaz, one of the back most of the community. Good to see you, Mr. Diaz. Hope you're doing well. Hope things went uh, extremely well, swimmingly in New York for you, my friend. Good to see you. How are you doing? I think live service games have their place in the video game industry. I mean, they obviously do. There's people that play them. I think it's just, I'm not saying like kill all live service games, you know. They're not my thing. But I do think that the market is becoming saturated. And there have been notable losers this time because every fucking publisher wants like three or four or five live service games going on. It's like you're, good, you're cutting into the... You're, 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 sometimes they're undercutting themselves and you're already in a market that's oversaturated. We've already had some big fucking losers. Anthem was a huge fucking colossal failure for both Bioware and EA. That thing's dead. I think it's fucking dead. It was dead on arrival. Is now it's deader than dead. If they killed that shit, dead chat. You know, to quote to quote uh, Michael Keaton in Spider Man Homecoming, "I'll kill you dead." <laughs> and that's what happened to Anthem. And so, like Destiny Two seems to be that big one that's con- that continues on. Like Destiny Two, I guess the D- Division Two, I suppose. Um, I'm sure there's other ones I don't can't think. I, you know, Avengers seems to be a lot. The Ganoush, Mrs. Ganoush. Maybe Mrs. Ganoush will be in the movie. That'd be great. That'd be great, Chad. Mm-hmm. There was an idea for a what if episode where they cross over Star Wars. That was great. Oh, that would be fucking fun to see. Uh, I don't see multiverse of bands being uh, Avengers Endgame like, but there will be some random ass characters coming back. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Was Bruce Campbell dreaming? I don't believe he was. I can't. I don't think so. Tom Clancy's zombies look the same, but still. Do- yeah, that that whole that Tom Clancy zombies exactly what it is. And they put his name on anything nowadays. Uh yeah, that that whole the Rainbow Six zombies. I was like, I don't fucking. I, don't, I didn't like any of that. We missed you over there, man, but had some great time with Coleman, Martin, Christian, and Oz. Hope you come to L.A., dude. Yes, I, I, as far as I know, um, I'm set to do that. I'm good to do that. No other obligations. So hope, hopefully soon, man. Yeah, then uh, we can hang, hang out, have a drink or two, have some food. That'd be great. Now, chat, please do check out the chat deck. Check out Mr. Diaz. Give that man some support, chat. I would appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Just finished making sea salt truffle cookie batter. Drink about, that sounds like a great fucking day. That sounds delicious. I would like all that in my tum tum right now. Yes. Mm hmm. Ha, no, Bruce Campbell and Dragon Hill would have been hilarious if he voiced the prince. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Or maybe we'll see him in the new movie. Maybe he'll play, he'll be Mysterio. He'll be the alternate Mysterio. That would be great if they managed to make him the another version of Mysterio because he was supposed to be in Spider Man 4. That would have been really, really funny. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Tell me that's the hardest working dead man since Michael J. He's been how long has he been dead for? Like eighteen years. He's been dead for a while, has it? Tell me that's been dead for like a good long while, right? It's been over a decade. Black Matter, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Yes. No. You think Japanese Spider Man will appear? Wouldn't be surprised. I think I think there's a better chance of Japanese Spider Man. He might you know, they might make a cameo in like um Spider Man No Way Home. I think there's a better chance of him appearing in Into the Spider Verse Two, you know, because that's just I think that'd be like a little more comedic. Uh, but then I think both are possibilities, possibilities. But I think greater chance probably of Into Spider Verse because you could have like a Spider Mech. I think there will be a Spider Mech battle in Into the Spider Verse Two. That's just what I'm feeling, like a Mecha robot. Yeah, exactly. And I brown the butter. It's worth a difference when you do this. Nice man, oh, that's good. Something that sounds delicious. You're doing it right. You're living right now. You're doing the day right. Congratulations. Very good. Very good. Uh, but yeah, those are the three games I picked, chat. Doctor Strange, The Punisher, Black Panther, Doctor Strange being made by Sony Santa Monica, The Punisher being made by The Coalition, Black Panther being made by Sucker Punch. Those would be my choices, chat. Now, we'll go on to Austin's last one again, video game themed. Question two. What's, what's something you wished was shown at the PlayStation showcase that wasn't? Like, I thought it was a pretty good showcase. I mean... I understand why they didn't show KOTOR gameplay because they don't have any gameplay to show. But, I mean, yes, of course, I would love to see some KOTOR gameplay, but that game is a few years away, probably 2023 at the 
or at least maybe even probably 2024. So it's, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while before we actually see. I mean, we'll see some footage of it soon. Probably some gameplay next year or something like that, but it's going to be a while. But yeah, would I love to have seen that? Of course. Would I love to rub my nips to some KOTOR, Darth Revan, Basila Sean, Candorous Ordo gameplay? Of course I would have, chap. I didn't get that. That's fine, but I understand why. One thing I thought was interesting that it was absent was Final Fantasy 16 gameplay. Um... They showed this, I feel like, in another Sony showcase a while ago. And I was just like, this looks really good. It's made by the Final Fantasy VII Remake team, which has me excited. And I was like, okay. So it's not the Final Fantasy XV guys, thank fucking God, because I hate that game. Um, so I'm like, okay. All right, and I liked what I saw. They're going back to the medieval thing, which you have not seen in Final Fantasy for a very fucking long time. And I yearn for that instead of, you know, because Final Fantasy for so long has either been modern dystopian or super sci-fi. That's pretty much what Final Fantasy's been for a long time. I really do yearn for the days, chat, of that steampunk kind of, you know, medieval aesthetic. You know, the, of the Final Fantasy IX, if you will, which you have nine, or something like six. So we can get that. That would be cool. I would have liked to have seen some more gameplay, maybe more of uh, this story. But uh, I remember being very positive about Final Fantasy sixteen when I initially saw the preview. I was like, oh, this looks, this has my interest. So... I would have liked to have seen more, but we didn't get that. Because we know that's going to be um, going to PlayStation 5 first. I think, what, PC, P PS5? Because I don't think, I don't think, 7 Remake's not on Xbox yet, or is it? Because I know it's 7, I know that it has like a temporary console exclusivity deal with Sony. And I think 7 will, 7 Remake will eventually go to Xbox, I want to say. But uh, I don't know when. I don't know when. But yeah, I would, I would love, those are two big ones. I mean, of course, I want to say Kotor gameplay, who doesn't? And uh, Final Fantasy 16 game, but I would like to have seen that. That was oddly missing. I think I had one criticism, was like, I want more Final Fantasy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, it's not made by the, the remake, guys. No, it's, no, I'm sorry. It's not, um, I'm wrong. No, it's made by the Final Fantasy 14 guys. I think that's who it is. The MMO, that's who it is. I'm sorry, because the Final Fantasy 7 remake guys are working on remake part two. That's what it is, my apologies. And I think Final Fantasy 16 is being made by the Final Fantasy 14 MMO people. That's what it is. There you go. Boom. Oh, Tokyo Game Show is supposed to have obviously cool. Is that coming up soon? Nice. Yes. I wish they make a video games with D plus like that. There, there are a lot of games like that. There are a lot of great story based games out there. You know, I would I would throw God of War. God of War has a fantastic like you know God of War twenty eighteen is a fantastic story. You know, Uncharted has some good. I mean, they're maybe not as deep as you know those um, those games, but they're fun. Uncharted four certainly. There are definitely deep story based Mass Effect. Mass Effect definitely has that. You know? Yeah. Surprised there was any news from Naughty Dog. I think Naughty Dog is. is there, there's a rumor that they're working on a multiplayer component to The Last of Us Part 2. Factions? That's been rumored for a very long time. I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. And I know they're working on a new IP. There was a rumor that they were working on a fantasy medieval esque game, but I think that was. That was disproven. They said we're not working on something like that. But I would actually love to see like Naughty Dog do a fantasy game. I because I I don't want them to just because the thing is like I like you know I don't want to get in the weeds here. I like Last of Us Part Two. My only big issue with the game I thought that the pacing was off for the game, but I really did like it. I don't really want them to go immediately into a Last of Us Part Three. I think that's still a ways off. I think we're going to get that someday. There's going to be a ways off. I think they want some separation from the whole controversy or the faux controversy, whatever you want to call it. And I don't think they're going to... I think we're going to get another Uncharted game, not from them, but a different studio. I think I think Sony Bend was working on a... Or no, was it... Yeah, Sony Bend, I think, was working on an Uncharted game that was canceled, though. Um, I think that was like a year in development. Like, we don't work on this anymore. So that might have shifted to a different Sony team. But I would love to see them working on a new IP. I really do. Like, with a different tone. I think I would like... I, I would really love to see them delve into fantasy. And that'd be interesting. Interesting to me. What do you think uh, episode six or whatever is going to be about? No idea. No idea. We got to do, uh, do a watch party for episode five, chat. I have thoughts on that episode. I have thoughts on episode, chat. Mm hmm. Ju juicy, juicy fantasy juice team. Fuck yeah, I love that. It's just you, all the characters are me. I did see the episode, chat. I did watch it. I did watch it ahead of time because, you know, I was like, everyone's talking about it. So I was like, all right, I got to watch this now. And I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts on uh, on episode five. It's like it's like there are things I like about this episode, and things I don't. That that's that's a, that's an episode. It's like okay, you could not. I will say this because I'm going to do a watch party for. We'll probably do a watch party for it this week. We'll do episode five and six back to back. 
But that's an episode where it's like you could not commit to a single tone. It was like whiplash back and forth. Like we were going from super serious to then fucking really comedic. I'm like, what, what are we, where are we going with guys? So it was, uh, it was, um, it was weird to me. I was, I was like, I, I liked a lot of it. There's some really cool scenes in it, but it's like one moment we're being really fucking dramatic. And next time we're like the joking. And it was because a lot of people like, you know, criticize Marvel. It's like, okay, enough of the jokes. And this is the first time I'm like, all right, you gotta, you gotta pick with one. Are we going Shaun of the Dead or are we going fucking 28 Days Later? You gotta, you can't go back and forth like that. That was really weird to me with the, the episode five. I know a lot of people were saying that they love that episode and I liked it to a degree, but it had some really weird fucking tonal problems. Um, it was a little, it was a little odd to me. A little odd to me. Oh, that's right. The last of us remake, which no one wants the last of us remake, which I'm like, why that game is not 10 years old. That's not It's like what? Eight years old. Yeah. That game is eight years old and you're already making a remake. Like no one, I just don't want that. That is fucking weird. Ugh. What's his watch party? Speak? Oh, uh, I do watch parties typically. Uh, well, most recently, like, you know, I usually do them. All, I used to do them every Friday for like a big show that was out or whatever. But um, now I'm doing them for Marvel's What If. And I usually do those on Wednesdays because that's when the new episodes come out. And so I'll be doing one for five and six when that comes out um, this Wednesday. Doing those back to back. You love the Don't Lie? Oh, the, the episode five? No. No, there's things I liked about it and there's things I'm like, this is fucking weird. It, it, was, it was an odd episode. I liked it. I liked it, but I didn't love it. I, I, d d d d episode four and three are my favorites. Like that is like that is some good what if. That's some good writing. I thought that was that was consistent. That was consistent, Chad. Sure, that was my complaint with Black Widow. Are you going to be serious or the Soviet Simpsons? Oh, 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 like the the <laughs> Soviet fucking Simpsons. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that. I. I I like that for the most part, but it, it had some it had some problems. It had some problems, especially with Taskmaster. Oh, Tenchu does need a Ruben. I agree. I agree. But now, we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, Osnick's third and final question. Question three. When this is related to some, what someone asked earlier about what I want to see in, in Spider-Man 2. He says, question three. What are the things you want in Insomniac Spider-Man 2? I think, like, for a lot of people, it's just, um, we all we want more villains. You know, in the last game, we got, like, a lot of cool video villains. We got Mr. Negative. We got Doc Ock, Vulture, you know, um, Electro, Rhino. I'm the Rhino. Scorpion stuff. Tombstone, you know. And I thought Doc Ock and Mr. Negative were handled especially well because that was the focus on them, you know, as the, as the main villains. With this one, I mean, I think it's already confirmed that, Cra I mean, Craven the Hunter, which I think was what we're getting. Can't wait for that. I think he's the one that's narrating the trailer. Very excited. Uh, I would love, people have been saying, I love Mysterio. I'm a big Mysterio fan, chat. I mean, after the, you know, Far From Home, I think people are just like, yeah, give me the more of that Mysterio, baby. So I'd love to see him, you know. Um, we're getting Venom, and my request is let, let's have Venom with some actual fucking character development because that's what that character needs. He's needed it for 30 fucking years that he's been in existence. Um, and it's occasionally been done. You know, Ultimate Spider-Man, I think it was done fairly well. The comic. But this time it's like, all right, you have an opportunity. I think making him Harry Osborn is, is smart. I think that's perfect. I think the fact you got Tony Todd doing the voice is perfect. It's like, don't, don't blow it. Because I think that's a character who, I'm, I, again, he looks cool, but I think he has, the, he has no depth. And I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for like, a, I want to care about Venom. I want to actually give a shit about him. And if you can do that, very impressive. Very impressive. If, and I, I believe Insomniac will make me care. Which I can't wait. Photography missions would be interesting. That way, you know, because yeah, there's photography in the game, but it's more collectible related. I don't know. Maybe I could do something like that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, see how that'd be incorporated. Not bad. Not bad. That's a good suggestion. Um, some other things that are not villain related, because there's so many villains. I want this villain. I want this, you know, whatever. I would love a, uh, um, like a kind of like a tomb. I wish they would do. So the tombstone thing was like a mission that you can just ignore. But it was like a side mission. Like, you tombstones in the game, you see him and shit. But then you don't have to do the tombstone missions if you don't want to. But I like that that was like a cool little side story. And I would actually love if they did more side quests like that, dealing with other villains. And so I think it'd be really cool to do, and maybe they do that with Mysterio, but I think it'd be awesome to do that maybe with a chameleon. Uh, I would love the chameleon. There's going to be some like minor, 
you know, Spider-Man villains are ones that don't don't get a, like a lot of play in video games. So I think Chameleon would be high on my list to see. Like he's a guy who's he's always fucking disguised. How can we fucking spot him? It's this it's this side quest that goes throughout the game. You're just trying to catch the Chameleon. That would be really interesting to me. I would love something like that. More missions structured around some other like minor villains. Like I'd love to fucking deal with Boomerang or Speed Demon or the Beetle. Like I think that'd be really really fucking fun. Uh, some other one more narrative things. Um, I would love to see just you know continue evolution of MJ and Peter's relationship. I mean, Peter's in a very I mean very last last off. I mean he's lost Aunt May. She's dead, and all of his connections to his like his blood family. May wasn't even his blood family. Like that's all gone now. And so he doesn't he does have MJ. So how is their relationship gonna is that gonna change? How is that gonna are they gonna get married? Like there's a lot of I mean, I think he's going to need her more now than ever because I think he's going to be in a, in, a, in a lonely place. I mean, he also has, I think, like a brother in, in Miles, too. Like, how's that relationship going to change? What's Miles' function going to be in this game? What he went through with Miles Morales? You know, people perceive him now. You know, they have their kind of, that's their, that little trio. That's that, that little family between the three of them. They all know this secret about each other. You know, I think that's going to be really fucking interesting. Um, and I would love to see the appearance of some other notable. I mean, we, we got JJ in the last game. He's more of like an Alex Jones type, but I'd actually like to see. I love how they handled him too. It was like, oh, make him an Alex Jones is perfect. Because of course he would be like something, someone like that nowadays. But I would actually like to see an interactive JJ and James. I think that'd be cool. I would love to see Ned Leeds, you know, who's a reporter for the Daily Bugle, eventually becomes the Hobgoblin. Um, more of that. I want to see more of Norman Osborne, which I believe we'll get. And his connection to Harry and creating the Venom symbiote. Like, there's there's a lot. There's a lot that they could potentially do. But those are just a couple of the things off the top of my head I would like to see. And I'm hopeful again. I'm like, I, I expect that it's going to be, at the very least, a great game. Much like the original one. Yeah. I mean, she's one of the immortals. She just keeps coming back. She won't, yeah, she keeps coming back. We see Spider-Man vs. Deadpool. That'd be cool. I mean, yeah, Deadpool in the game. Maybe we had Taskmaster in the game. Who knows? We could get Deadpool. It'd be fun if we had a mission that had to escape on. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really fun going to punish him. That's how that's how he made his debut originally in Marvel. He was hunting Spider-Man. Along with the Jackal. Uh, bring back Taskmaster. I really like uh, the Cinderella. I'm mad bad, but we'll get that. Because he, uh, he escapes, right? So I imagine he can come back. But Spider-Man gave those villains better death, including the comics and the Raimi movies. Says that guy, Jimmy. Yeah, she had the red virus. I would love to have a lab where you work on suits to see how they are made. That'd be cool. Yeah. You see, Venom 2 is one hour and 30 minutes. Thank fucking God. I, everyone was so upset when I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to be in the theater any longer than I want to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got to deliver the pizzas. Pizza time. Got to have the pizza time missions, chat. Yes. Mm hmm Agreed. I, <laughs> everyone's so upset. Like, listen, listen, guys. The, the Venom movie, it's going to. It's going to be the same as the last one. <laughs> it's just going to have Carnage in it. It's going to have fucking goofy Woody Harrelson, you know, as Carnage, who is just like, I'm crazy. That's my thing. And it's like, all right. I am so fucking happy. I am so happy it's only 90 minutes long because they're like, all right, we're going to get in, get out. <laughs> I am risking my life to see that movie. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, John Cena looks for Chris Stars. No! No, yeah, it's his. Andy Serkis is directing it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's Andy Serkis. I, you know, I wish him the best luck. Support your local juicers. Thank you, Ace Rock. Thank you so much to the gifted sub. To Dill Murray. Appreciate that, my friend. Cheers and salute to you. Thank you for all the support today, guys. It's been an awesome stream. Very fun stream today. I have enjoyed myself quite thoroughly because of you. Mm. Let's go to the Titus doing voice of the game. I like that. I like that. I like that. I feel like Venom needs to be a quick movie, straight to the point. Don't understand. Exactly. I just don't understand the love for the Venom film is the worst. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I believe I don't like it. I don't like it either. I don't like the character. I don't like the movie. We'll see. Because I don't know if you talked about this, but we're going to get Spider-Man. Yeah, it's cool. That was, that was confirmed. We were, we were, we were uh, speculating if it was or not. And so now they've confirmed that new edition. Nice. That's great. That's fantastic. I love that. That's good. Did they confirm that today? Who do you think has a better rogues gallery, Spider-Man or Batman? They have both of them have a really good rogues gallery. Like I think if you have to pick, like that's definitely like if you had to put like who has the best rogue valley, excuse me, who has the best rogues gallery from each competing company? I mean, Batman would be number one, and Spider-Man I think would be number one. I feel, yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard. Maybe I would go with Batman. 
Batman though, but I mean, they're, they're very close to each other. They're they're very very close to each other. Yeah, but I th I feel like for for myself, I would probably just pick Batman. But Spider Man's great. Spider Man's an excellent rogues gallery. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you. Oh man, we also follow those Batman. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> Holy shit! That's crazy. Fucking nuts. Victor, Victor, Batman sucks, but villains make up for. Well, that's just your opinion. No, to each their own. To each their own, of course. Uh, but yeah, those are the couple of things I've talked my head. I mean, Craven. I think we're getting Craven. I'd love to see Mysterio. I, love to, I want to see the Chameleon and Speed Demon and Boomerang and the Beetle. I want to see some of these goofy villains. That'd be cool. Venom with actual fucking character development. MJ and Piers and and Miles' relationship continue to grow and change over time. I love that. And uh, yeah, some other supporting cast. I want to see more JJ. I want to see Ned Leeds. I'm a big Ned Leeds fan. Chad hints of the Hobgoblin. We'll see someday. They might get, they might get Green Goblins. I mean, that might be too much for one game. I mean, they did surprise us with. Do That's the thing people forget. They kept, they kept the the Doctor Octavius thing under wraps. Like, I m maybe it leaked. I think like maybe in the last week. But for the most part, like no one fucking knew that Doctor Octavius Doc Ock was in that game because all the all the time they were ever showcasing the game was all about Mister Negative. It was always about Mister Negative or maybe like the Rhino or um, Scorpion, you know, Shocker, maybe something like that. But they really managed to keep Doc Ock because I when I first I was like, oh fuck, I, that was a surprise to me. I did not know Doc Ock was going to be in the game. I did not know that. You can watch my original game, but I was like, holy shit, it's Dr. Otto Octavius. Like, they did a great job keeping that secret, and I was like, whoa. And I loved how they handled Doc Ock. That's probably my, my favorite adaptation of Doc Ock ever. They did such a great job. So, there might be a big fucking, oh, fuck, the Green Goblin's here. You know, who knows? Who knows, shit? Then we can get fucking, we can get this guy's, you know, uh, William Dafoe. You know, ha, ha, ha. MJ and I are going to have a hell of a time. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that, shit. Very still mad that it's not rated R. I'm like, who the fuck cares? Carnage may be violent, brutal, and venomous, friendly to the spot. Oh, yeah, I know people were mad about that. I was actually surprised. I thought they make it rated R. But, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because they saw Suicide Squad and they're like, I don't know about that. Must be a very good person because everyone, e even though Chris hates Spawn and Venom, I still love him. Man, know, man, like what you like. My whole thing is this. Good to see you, by the way. As I've always said, like what you like, dislike what you dislike. I'm not here to say, like, you're wrong for liking that thing. I'm never, I never say that. I never say that. Enjoy what, like, most people love Venom. They do. They love him. Um, and I'm not taking away that love. But people ask me my opinion. Well, I'm going to share my opinion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it. But I, I will never take away anyone's love for something. You know, that, that's fine. I think what's so good about this, we can have these discussions. I really want to create an environment for people where it's just not, not hating on something. Like, let's discuss this. And I'm not here to change anybody's mind. I'm just here to share my opinion and my thoughts. You know, that's my whole thing. The last thing I want to do is become one of those YouTubers that's like, this is why this sucks. This is why this sucks. And this sucks. Like, I can't, I can't live in that mind space. That idea of that mind space scares me. Because that person just has to be so fucking broken. <laughs> as a person. <laughs> they got to be so fucking broken. I just can't do it. I can't do it. Whew. Are you looking forward to Sony's film role of Craven? No, I would love to see Craven in a Spider-Man movie, but I'm just like, he's a sociopath that hunts people. <laughs> I just, I don't know how you're going to make that work. I mean, what they'll probably do is he's hunting Venom or something, but uh, I'll never get my Craven's Last Hunt adaptation. Loose or, you know, or otherwise. So, I don't know. I don't mind, uh, what's his name, being cast as Craven. I think that's fine. Yeah. Now, now my first choice, but it's like, he's a good actor. We'll see. It'd be funny if they made the new Spider-Man movie as an intro to... Oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, they're going to combine. They're going to eventually connect them. That's what's inevitably going to happen. I think Batman the Animated Series made his films better than they were originally. Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, Mr. Freeze, yeah. Hell, yeah. Mr. Freeze especially. Mr. Freeze was... I'm the ice guy. Like, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini were the ones, and the rest of those writers were the ones that came up with the whole wife concept. That was them. Yeah. They absolutely did. No, the Animated Series had Harley Quinn came from them. They've had a, a, a fantastic impact, you know, on, on uh, Batman's Rose Gallery. Most of the time, uh, for, for, for better, I would say. Mm. William the friend hates always the foe. <laughs> so it was great, but I wanted to see more reasons. His friend's friend of me, he's on the film, Cardiac. Oh, Cardiac, I remember Cardiac. Slingers, Wraith. All oh, the Slingers, the Spider Slingers. I remember those guys. Wraith, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, his alter egos, like when he was on the run and he, he became all these different heroes and then they 
he gave another people. I remember that shit. I remember that shit. 90s. 90s, chat were crazy. Yeah. Crooked Shoe Tales, welcome back to the stream. How you doing? Just talking to the people, answering Patreon questions right now. Having a good time. That meant to me, he's the fan of Greg Goblin. Uh, um, uh, Defoe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As of right now, definitely. I agree. Uh, yeah, he's the best adaptation of the character. Agreed. Uh, unless it's Spider-Man 3. Mine's allowed to be wrong. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> That's Spider-Man 3. You see where Toby and Willem are talking, but they're basically really mad. I love that. It's so fucking so bad. It's just people pantomiming. <laughs> Like, you're like, no, it is no movement. That's why I'm really happy that they, they gave Tom Holland the eyes that move. And I was like, yeah, because it when you think of the comics, Spider-Man's eyes are always moving, and there's always expression. And they never captured that in film. And I was so glad they did that with Tom Holland's suit. I was like, oh, it's perfect. It's so good. And, and it improves it. It improves it. His mask, his face is fully covered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most interesting part of Venom is Spider-Man. I agree with you, Deadpool. Like, I like the black suit. I love the look of it. You know, I like the idea of the symbiote. I just, I, I, I just don't like Eddie Brock. I think that's really what it is, what it comes down to. I don't like Eddie Brock. What's someone loves 365 days? And that's, I mean, well, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, you know. We're doing, we're, it's like, what if? Now we're doing what ifs. And it's like, come on now. Come on now. We just go to cough, court, and cough. Eh, you know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yes. What about Craven as a threat? He's a crazy fucking hunter that wants to skin you alive, man. That's scary. <laughs> I don't want that. Oh, my God. Mm. Wonder if we get to play... Wonder if we get to play as Venom. I don't know. That could be a surprise in the game. We'll see. I bet the symbiote... I bet we'll have the symbiote at one point in the game. I bet Peter or Miles will get it. You know? Yeah. Josh, my sweet baby broccoli boy, we should hold off on DBD for a little while. Bad glitch of Pinhead's release. Damn it! That is causing accounts to be reset. Luckily, we should purchase DLC. Holy fucking shit. That's like the worst kind. Damn. No, thank you for reminding me, man. I was going to hit you up about that. It's like, hey, let's play DVD this week, but apparently not. <laughs> okay, we'll wait. We'll definitely wait. We have time. But good to see you, my sweet baby broccoli boy, Joshua. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Luke the Boss, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Luke the Boss. The Boss. I think the symbiote itself is more interesting than I agreed. I agreed. I agree with you. See, we can, we, 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 we can meet on mutual ground. We can meet on fucking, you know, some ground. I like that. He's cool looking sounding. Yep. I've always said that. I've always said Venom looks cool. Aesthetically, it's a great design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, they are, that's like, the miles of the symbiote. They, they are, they are, they are playing around the Spider-Man mythology. And it could be where Miles gets the symbiote. We don't know. Yeah, I like that. I still remember your cartoons. What are you about, uh, uh, Craven drinking spunk. <laughs> yes, please do check out my review, my Spider-Man Animated Series review, uh, of where it's Craven the Hunter, where he drinks jism. <laughs> where he drinks, he let it. That's what it looks like, Chad. He drinks fucking jism. I'm not. I'm not lying. Watch that episode. He also hugs you. That's his go-to attack. He, I hug you from behind, Spider-Man. No. Oh my God. This best Thursday was the birthday of Colonel Sanders and Otis Redding. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I would like Spider-Man in the new Spider-Man game to come back. Come back here, shucker! I, there was a lost opportunity because in Spider-Man... Oh, because he has a symbiote, right? I think it would have been really funny because Shocker is just that classic D-list Spider-Man villain. He's like... In, he's all in all these games. He's usually always the first villain you fight or something. But I think there was a lost opportunity when you were chasing after him. Like, come back here, shucker! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! They could do it again. They could do it again, and that would be, ah, that would be perfect. I would fucking love that shocker. I'm a big shocker fan, Chad. He's like one of my favorite D-list Marvel villains. If you've never read Sp Superior Foes, I think it's called Superior Foes. Spider-Man, fantastic, Fant It's like the Suicide Squad of Marvel, um, where it's just these fucking schlub. It's just the schlubs. These D-list villains like the Beetle, like the Speed Demon, like Boomerang. It's not even like the original Beatles, like the fourth Beatle or whatever. And Shocker. And they're just like, they're like, Let, we're, we're going to form our own Sinister Six. And they're like, there's only five of us. I know, but Sinister Six is a... Like, I just love the... <laughs> I love the humor. I forget who fucking... Was it Nick Spencer wrote that? Great book. Great fucking book, chat. Really funny. I would... That would be like... I don't know if it ever happened, 
What if Sony and Marvel, like Marvel proper and Sony, would do a superior foes of Spider-Man with all these fucking D-list shitty villains coming together? That would be great. Oh, it would be so good. Yes. Yes, craving the fluff for buttermilk edition. Yeah! <laughs> That's right! That's right. Look at the YouTube videos. Actor was screaming from the top of his uh, lungs like he was in college. I loved it. I loved it, though. Shocker! Mm-hmm. Especially dealers. Oh, yeah, he's a joke. Like, Shocker's even a bigger joke in Ultimate. Yeah. Although, so is Craven, to agree. Uh, I remember Shocker in the old first Spider-Man game. I like his lines. Like, come on. Freak Shocker School of Nux. Is that what he said? Look about the YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I have not read Modern Spider-Man comics in a very long time, but earlier this year I read a story about Red Goblin. Can you guess what that is? And it was a great... No. There's so many goblins nowadays. There's Demo Goblin. I remember Demo, Demo, Go Dem Demo Goblin in the 90s during the, cra the, the Carnage era. There's a shit ton of goblins now. Hey, Chris, I was amazed to find... Is that what this is a symbiote or something again? That's like a symbiote thing, isn't it? Hey, Chris, I was amazed to find out that Stanley's favorite DC character was Lobo. Seems to me. Too bad neither him or me gonna live long enough to see a live action adaptation of the Badass Scream. I mean, you never know. You never know. You never know. I could see that happening someday. Yeah. Yeah. So he wants to make their villains into main characters, yet they don't use something like superior foes instead. I know that'd be that'd be like they are trying to make villains into boring antiheroes. Yeah, I just don't like that. Like the fact that Craven's gonna be an antihero is just like he's a fucking he hunts people. He skins them alive and mounts them to his walls. It's so weird. They're like, yeah, he's an anti. He's never been an antihero. He's always been a villain. He's insane. I want a Superior Foes movie where Boomerang is Parker's roommate. Like, yes, it's been, yeah, that'd be great. I would love that. Regardless, Norman Osborn's combined with the Carnage symbiote. Oh, shit, I did not know that. I knew it was some, I, I was like, this symbiote related, ain't it? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, he's running up here. He's like, yeah, no, it's been great. No, I'm happy to have all these people here. Thank you. We've just been answering questions, going to the chat, talking. We talk, this, this, all the Spider-Man talk is based on the new Spider-Man 2 video game, which is coming out in 2023 by Insomniac, which I'm very excited about. Is DT streaming tonight? I don't believe so. Uh, I think Corey confirmed that they are not streaming. They did, they just came back from New York. I think they're but I think they just landed a few hours ago. So no DT stream tonight. Although I th think it'll start going back to normal tomorrow. I know that Corey is going to Turkey soon. I don't know specifically when. But I know that might be happening. So just just let, put it out there for you guys. Just putting it out there. Color, good to see you. Yo, you're back. I miss you, Color. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I decided to do a little, you know, class in the glass cast for your ass of a little bit of sass. Uh, since, you know, I wasn't on the Sunday service. Not, you know, no Sunday service today. And I wanted to stream when I came back. And I was like, today's the day. Let's do it. It's been great. Is Corey got going to him with turkey? Yes, it, he is. He is, actually. You're right. You're correct. Yeah. It was so cool. Highly recommend. Cool. Now, I mean, just, I want to get back to the comics someday. I just, I'm just not. I'm not in that place where I can at this moment, but someday I will. I don't know, maybe we'll like this book club idea I have for like movies. Maybe I can incorporate that for comics too. We'll see, chat. If I can make it a part of the content, then perhaps. Bad Shields, thank you so much for resubscribing. 13 months of support, a year and some change. Thank you, Bad Shields. Absolute pleasure to have you here. You good job hosting DD Streams. So if he leaves for Turkey, I think you can hold down some of the TV, sh uh, some of the shows. Yeah, I um. I don't know which ones I would hold, which ones I would do. I imagine Sunday service, yes, and maybe the movie review extravaganza, perhaps. Um, outside of that, I don't know if I'd do the other ones. I think he might do the other ones, but I know those would be the death. And I guess, and oh, and and, and uh, excuse me, I need to pick crumbs, which I might have to contact um, a person to uh, help me with that, be a co-host. So we'll see. We'll see, chat. I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know. They're expensive. Comics are expensive. Expensive. Very true. But that was Austin's last question in regards to the Spider-Man 2, the game. Austin, thank you for being a Revenite subscriber on my Patreon, Class of Glass. We appreciate that. Alex Banal, YouTube editor extraordinary Alex Banal. 13 months of support, a year and some change. Welcome back, Chris. Welcome back, Alex Banal. Good to see you all. Chat, we are on the cusp. We are on the cusp of another hype train. Can we do it? We got up to a level 5, over 100% hype train last night. That was pretty amazing. And thank you, Alex Banal, for the host. Spread the word of the noise. There's the words going out there. Chat, hopefully now we get more Revenites. But also Huckleberry chat. Follow with fans, as I like to call them. Thank you. You ate big crumbs? Yeah, I probably would do that. I'd probably host it along with someone else. Maybe TJ, maybe Patrick Gertz. I haven't talked to them in a while. It might be fun. I had to contact them, but again, you know, it's based on their schedules. 
You don't want to just drop it on them. Do this with me now. I can't do that. John Elman, or Color, thank you so much for the 10 biddies. John Elman with 100 biddies and Deadpool coming in with the 200 biddies. We getting hyped, chat. We getting hyped right now. Two hype trains during the stream. Absolutely incredible. Let's get that juicy remix in there. Glee of a 100 biddies. Current down at that level one. Ass do a loop-de-loop. -loop. All the loop-de-loops. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Emily, for another... For another <laughs> eight bitties, <laughs> yay! Hype train success. We did it. We did a new hype train song. Oh, I've used this before. I've used this before. I swap out. Sometimes I swap this out with the um, um, the juicy rock created by uh, Harry Ballsack, Hanan Bismuth. I used to play the Mortal Kombat theme, but kept getting uh, kept getting the copyright. I was like, oh, so I want to be careful. Thankfully, this has changed just enough where because Doodle Bob's is layered on top of it, so I can't get copyright at least so far. We'll see. My change. Woo! Girls go full humming. No! Deadpool, thank you so much for the 15 minutes. Insert Corey's what the f what the fuck Christmas. Yay! <laughs> That's music. That is music. That is technically music. By definition, that is music. That's a cover. Yes. There you go. Power Rangers theme? I can't use that one either. I can't do it. It has to be changed significantly or something like layered on top where it kind of covers it. And having Doodle Bob going, <laughs> it, it, it covers up most of it. So it works out. Thank God. But there you go, chat. We're going to keep going on with these questions. I still got some more questions to do here, chat. It's not over. It's not over until the fat lady sings, let me tell you. But before I do that, chat, I need to get more alcohol. And I need to go potty. I need to pee. So in the meantime, chat, please entertain yourselves amongst yourselves, and I shall return. Stick around, you crazy kids. I'll be right back. I'm back. I, 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 I did potty. And I also got on the beverage. It was very nice, shit. She didn't salute you. Yes. I know. I did. I interrupt chair time. Thunder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chair does have the curves. Oh shit! Hit my mic, chair. <clears throat> but now, my friends, now we can go ahead. We can continue on with the stream. In case I had some new people coming in here again, welcome. Hope you're all doing very well today. Currently in the middle of class in the glass cast for your ass of a little bit of sass, and we're now down to the last questions from color. Me Hazel. So we're going to go ahead and start reading them. Come Hazel. What is the rudest? This is pretty funny today. What is the rudest, most insulting thing someone has said to you? I'll go first. Okay. I was coming back uh, from my lunch break, so I'm a little bloated. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Buddy Bradley, uh, Buddy Bradley saying this. Thank you so much. With a follow your money, welcome, very welcome to stream. I'm a little bloated. <laughs> hey, so she controls your feet. That's true. <laughs> but I, I love this. So the rudest, most insulting thing someone has ever said to you. I'll go first. I was coming back from my lunch break, so I'm a little bloated. Going back to work, I started helping the new seasonal employees like a good little employee I was. While I was helping out, the employee turns to me and says, so when are you due? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I turn to her and say, excuse me? She says, you're pregnant, right? Oh, no! I just looked at her and said, I'm not pregnant, and walked away leaving her to figure out the issue herself. <laughs> That's the worst. I love it. I just love how it starts so I was bloated today. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. That's adorable story, Carbazel. I had to think about this. Like, the most rudest, most insulting thing someone has ever said to me. Like, you know, I was legitimately, like, really, I was really thinking about it. And I'm like, I don't, I'm sure there, uh, no, oh, no, I know, I know, I know. You know, it's not, it was said to me, it was said of me. It was said of me, chat. That's what it is. Because I was really legitimately thinking about this. And um, I'm sure people sometimes, sometimes, like, set me off or whatever, but. Nothing, nothing immediately comes to mind, which I think is a good thing. At least nothing recently, certainly in the last couple of years or anything. But what was said of me, which I can look back on it now and laugh, although it inconvenienced me as a, at, the, at the time as a child. But you guys heard the story before. But um, growing up, chat like in kindergarten, elementary school, I just didn't give a shit. I didn't care. I didn't listen to the teachers. I was like, I don't care what you have to say. And it was during like one of those parent-teacher conferences uh, for kindergarten. And it was for like, it was at like a Catholic school. It was like a private Catholic school kindergarten. Uh, my parents, my, my mom and dad went in. They talked to the, the teacher. 
Mrs. Craig. I can say her name. I think I'll be safe. Mrs. Craig. And she's talking about, about me. And she, she said that now, Mr. and Mr. Herman, I don't want to alarm you, but I believe Christopher is retarded. <laughs> And this is the 90s chat, so they use these. This is the, this, this is the verbiage they used, okay? This is the verb, this, this is the fucking verbiage they used. But I remember my parents told me, like, years later, like, oh, yeah, she thought you were retarded. <laughs> either that, either that, or I was deaf. And it was partly that because I just didn't listen to her. I was, and they took me to, like, all these testing for, like, to test my hearing for, like, a hearing aid. I was like, I can hear fucking fine. I had no problem hearing. I just, I talked about, yeah, I talked about this one. And I guess it was rude, but again, I was a kid, so I didn't even know what was going on. I was like, right, I got to do this shit, I guess. But I can just look back on it and just laugh. Now, it inconvenienced me a little bit as a kid. Other than that, like, there's nothing really, you know, that has bothered me. I remember one time I was at, like, a convention. Uh, this was a while ago. This was, like, in the early 2000s. The early O's shit, if you will. It was like a Star Wars convention. Uh, it, was, it was before even, like, episode three came out. And I remember I went up to this guy because I was going to pay for this fucking Boba Fett figure arena or whatever. And I was just waiting in line. And, you know, I, I got up to the thing because there was a line and stuff. I got up to the thing and I got up there and I put the thing down and he just looked at me and said, did you fart? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, I did not fart yet. I did not fart. Chris especially. There's the clip. There's the famous fucking clip. Was the teacher good? Did you, clear, you didn't clarify. That's true. I never clarified. Uh, but there was that. I just walked away. I just walked away from that. But I was like, what the fuck? And I eventually went back and bought the figure. But it was like so weird. And I was like, well, um, <laughs> no. He fought it. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I did not. I did not. Listen, I know when I'm farting. I did not there. It was very, it was just so fucking weird. And I was like a little kid. This was like an adult guy. I don't know. I think that guy was kind of like, he had a chip on He was like a dick. I think he was just fucking with people. Oh, because why all these crazy things happen? I got a lot of I got a lot of fucking crazy things that happen in my life. I almost got fucking my eye gouged out by a crazy kid in like the third or fourth grade. You know, but I protected my my hand. You can still see the graph. You can't. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but let me see if you can see it on camera. I talked about that story a ton. Of that's why um, I don't think. Yeah. So right here, you see like a little mark in my hand. That's that's like graphite discoloring because a kid tried to. Kid fucking lost his mind, gouged one girl's eye out because he was sitting between us. He gouged the one girl's eye out, and he went to get me, and I blocked him with my hand and went in there, got stuck in there. So that happened. Yeah, that, that, that bad boy ain't right. <laughs> I was very, I'm like Bobby. I was like Bobby Hill. <laughs> School just crazy in the 90s. Had a teacher that screamed at kids. My mom talked to Prince uh, and like, look, can't have teachers screaming at kids. True. Well, my secondary school teachers recommended to my parents I take an eye exam because my writing was too small. <laughs> really? That's weird. Huh. It was small by choice. Yeah. Would you admit it? Never. Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her face turned both. Uh, what my wife has done, it probably the worst, was when she asked a black woman if she was snuggling a watermelon. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. So I had to break it down to her. That was wrong. Her face turned both forever and three inches wider. Oh, shit. Oh, no. And she didn't, I, I know, she obviously didn't, like, you know, do that because of race. She's just like, oh, because, you know, when, like, you got a watermelon in your tummy. Like, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. He just looked at you and was like, yeah, the guy looked like he farts. <laughs> He definitely looked at me. He's like, "You're the you're the guy that farts all the time, aren't you?" <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. Don't repeat the R word. It really bad. Now nah, I'm just telling you what was said. I don't use that word in my vernacular, my verbiage. But I'm just telling. Listen, this is the '90s, man. And that was like that. You know, the word retard. It's it was. It's actually a medical term. It's just been taken and it's been. It was. It was forced. It was turned into an insult. That's what happened. But like that was a medical term, um, yeah. And I, she, you, I, she, I don't know. Maybe she used it in that way. <laughs> uh, Vanny, welcome back to the stream. Just talk about when my, um, when my kindergarten teacher thought I was retarded. <laughs> Bad boy, I got, uh, I got asked if I was gay by my cousin the first day he got out of prison, and he stayed at home. I've been asked if I was gay before. I've had people who have assumed I was gay. Only a couple though. Only a couple of. I don't even want to say who they are, but because uh, we might know, you might know some of them. But uh, I have, I, have, I think I have like one or maybe, maybe two or three people that thought I was gay. 
I've had that. I've had that. DJ, my senior year, asked if I was dropped mad as a baby. I spit her life by not telling me, Mom. Yeah, that's true. Good, smart. She would have been dead. She would have killed that. She would have killed that teacher dead. I remember a kid tried to hit me one time, duck, and he hit the brick wall. Damn, broke his little stupid derpy fist, I bet, too. Good. Good. Mm. Yeah, doctors use a little time. I think they still, I mean, they definitely, I mean, they, they probably use it now. I mean, it's a medical term. That's what it is. Joey the Jody. Hello there. Ah, General Jody. Good to see you, Joey. Hope you're doing well. Talking about all fun stories, childhood stories. People assume, I guess that's true. I guess that happens more often. I just remember like that, but I wasn't insulted. I was like, nah, no, I'm just sensitive. <laughs> uh, I like asking, I like, I like the booty. I like, you, you know what I'm about. You know what I'm about, Jim. You got called a donut? What is <laughs> You donut. <laughs> uh, people thought I was gay, too. You, you give insult? Yeah. I, well, I am gay, but seriously, you don't just ask that. Yeah. Uh, they were very blunt about it. They were very blunt about it. Mom asked me if I was gay back in high school. Alex, I just showed up. Who's gay? gay? I've, been, I've been said to have been gay. But I'm not. I get asked if I'm gay sometimes. I think sometimes uh, because I don't discover. Oh no, that's fair. I think that's what it is. Because I, I, I think that might be it. No, to your point, Lakara, that's actually a good point you bring up. I'm very private when it comes to those kind of relationships. Um, I don't really talk about them too often. Either who I'm dating or I'm seeing anyone seriously. I just don't. You know, unless yeah. But I just yeah. I noticed that that was before like I really started streaming or anything like that. So I think I think that's people because I was I never really talked about like my girlfriend at the time. Not because I, that's because I just didn't, you know, um, not for because of, like I didn't like her. No, of course. Uh, of course, that wasn't the thing. But yeah, I, I'm just I'm just typically very proud about that kind of thing, you know, and I think that's why people like bringing up like, well, are you a, are you a, one of the gays? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't ask it that way. I'm joking. They didn't ask it that way. A few male uh, uh, prospects. I've had I've had women who, who thought I was gay. Two out of three people uh, who asked me if I was gay were women. Yeah. Most assaulting me because I just didn't like them. Hmm. The most insulting thing a guy said to me was I looked like a Pillsbury Doughboy with saggy. That's fucking saggy to damn. Oh, my God. That's mean. That is rude. That is rude. That is rude. I brought a kid's elementary school. Are you gay? Me? No kids. Does your mom know you're gay? <laughs> Jesus. Kids. Oh, so fucking cool. Kids are cruel. Kids are pieces of shit. Kids are little shits, chat. They have no... I got to always said this. Kids have no morality initially. You got to teach them. That's not in. That's not born in them. You have to teach them morality, chat. They have the ability to be uh, to have a sense of morality, but they can be raised in absence of, and it's fucking horrifying. Kids can be cruel little shits. No filters, no filters, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you have to find out, LaCaro. My little brother was convinced I was gay. For uh, whatever reason. That's what he called me, the F word. Whoa! Damn, that's not nice. Yeah, you are a minor character in the story of your life. Holy shit! <laughs> oh god, that hurts. Oh wow. Okay, that's a, that's a that's a big one. That's a big one. Like I can look back at mine and laugh. Like some of these are like, damn. <laughs> that's like a really powerful one. My mom accused me of being a lesbian. Now she asks when I'm gonna have a baby. The rudeness ever ends. Damn. So like, what's it gonna be, mom? Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're a minor character. What's that? That's a that's that's a that is brilliant. You are a minor character in the story of your life. That is so fucking cruel. That's that's like, it's like oh, but it's funny at the same time. Damn, damn, chat. Oh my lord, I've been told I look like Joker in Mass Effect. Oh, that's that's not that's not bad though, Vanny. That ain't rude. Joker's a handsome man in Mass Effect. He's got the, he gets the sexy robot lady. That's not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You could, could have been called worse. Could be called worse. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Panda. Pandas are cute and cuddly. Very cute. Mm. <clears throat> Fuck them kids. Fuck kids. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever I did my class and glass question go through. Yes. Most of them did. The bonus ones did. I don't know what happened. For some reason, Patreon deleted, like, on the on the post, it deleted your questions, but they were still sent to me through email. But I didn't know. I don't know what the bonus ones were because those were cut off. So you can send those in probably for like the next class in the glass cast, or I can read them now. You can send them in now. I can read them. Yeah, you know, I'm just in the middle of Carmi Hazels, but I could definitely do that. Was it Danielle who asked if you were gay? No, no, it was not. Dan it was not Danielle. Funny enough, it was not Danielle who did that. <laughs> Is it bad to lose your virginity at 22? No, no, not at all. People to place too much 
emphasis on like when you got to use your virginity, when you have to be in a serious relationship, when you need to be married, when you have to have kids. Take it all on your own, you know, time. That's what I always say. Take it on your own time. You know, there's nothing embarrassing about that at all. Yeah. Yeah. No. Not at all. <clears throat> I ended up not going with bonus question. Didn't uh, want to be. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. No problem at all. Yes. It's not an insult per se, but my friend broke up with his girlfriend and he came out of her mouth. It's not going to work out. <laughs> this is hilarious. Not going to work out. That's great. <laughs> I love it. These are some good answers, Chad. Very good. Yeah, mine are just, you know, when my kindergarten teacher said she thought I was retarded and when that guy said I farted, <laughs> which I did not fart. I did not fart, Chad. But I like Carmi Hazel's when it's like, oh, pregnant. Anytime you, you ooh. Yeah, that's just, yeah, I mean, because especially for women, Jesus Christ, where so much emphasis so often is placed just by our culture, by our society, placed on how they look. And to have someone that's like, oh, you're pregnant. What do you do? It's like, oh, I can see why you'd be mad. I understand that, Carmen Hazel. I get it. I get it. I get it. Now, great question here from Carmen Hazel. I like this one. Damn right, I took my time with all that. Yeah. Monica, I think it's been a little ship with me and my close friend who was like a brother to me. Weird chance. Huh? I understand. The shipping. Yeah, you see, I see that a lot in fiction. I don't in real life often enough. Interesting. Hmm. My teacher uh, thought I, too, was special in, in middle school. Interesting. I'll teach his pet through the country. Nice. Nice. Brown nosing. Very good. But now this is a very good question coming. Hazel. It says, what is an occult but seems cultish? So many things. And I've talked about this earlier, chat. Um, it's, that, it's that tribalism and how it can take so many forms. It can be... It can be organized religion. It can be political parties. It can be console fandom, Chad. It can be place the, the PlayStation fandom, you know, Xbox fandom, the Nintendo fandom, all going against each other, defending these fucking corporations based on what? Marvel versus DC. That's all very cultish, where you have these groups of people, these large groups of people, who attach themselves to something, and they will defend it, they will obsess over it. They will harass people over it for their entire fucking life. Like, and it is so bizarre to me. It's just like, do you really? And then what it is, it's like, I these people, they don't have a lot going on in their lives. And they have a lot of fucking free time. And they feel the need to attach themselves to something to make them feel whole, I feel like. You know, and that's what it is. And they will, they will fucking ride or die for it. And I'm just like, I just can't, something like that I can't do. One, these people just aren't, don't have enough going on in their lives. They're not busy. Like, I, I think I stay busy so I don't have time to obsess over these things. But it's like, it's so exhausting. Like, there's nothing wrong with being a fan of something. Nothing wrong with participating in religion at all. Like, that's not my thing. Or being, you know, politically active. But... Or, or like all those things. It's just you're taking it to the extreme degree, the absolute extreme fucking obsessive degree where it's your whole life and where that's all you obsess over and you harass people about it. And I think it's a combination. The person is just kind of not well. You know, they're probably lonely and they feel like this is a good way to fill that void in them. Um, and that's like, it's also to a degree like these people who are obsessed in this neg negativity, who are harassing these people, like these certain YouTubers, these certain content creator YouTubers. And I'm just like, you got to be in such a really bad place emotionally, psychologically to just do that every day. And I'm just like, I couldn't imagine that. I mean, I'm I like, listen, I'm a content creator as small as I am, but I like doing what I do. And I like talking about bad things because they're fun, but... I don't want to just hate on something over and over and over again. Like, that's my whole shtick. Because I feel like you're not, you're not, I mean, that just feels like a really miserable existence. You know what I'm saying? That just feels awful. The toxicity of it. Thank you. Is it Jaywer? Jaywer, 12, the following, my new Huckleberry. Welcome back to the stream. Welcome to the stream, I should say. Hope you're doing well. But it's, it's, it's those things that I'm just like, you, 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 can, you can indulge in all these different things, but... People take it to the extreme, and it becomes their whole life. When you when, when this one thing 
has become your whole life, it's like you got to fucking do some self-assessment. You got to look at yourself like, what the fuck am I doing? And I feel like so many people just don't do that. Vamps are toxic when their theories don't come true. I know that's, that's a big thing. It's like, oh, Star Wars, you know, Marvel DC, as I said. It's gonna be any, it could be any fandom. It could be really any fandom. Um, just name one. It's like, yep, of course. And it, it's I, I, and it's, 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 it's more obvious than ever. Like, it's so, like, I was watching the PlayStation Showcase, and it's that, it's, both, it's also entitlement, too, I think, to a degree. Uh, but, like, you have these people come in here or, or saying, like, God of War looks awful. It's like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like, listen. <laughs> like, to say that it looks bad, it's like, uh, really? <laughs> really? Or whatever. Or even, like, when you go to fucking Xbox and say Gears 5 looks bad, it's like, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> like, there's people, like, you're, you're just saying this because you want to protect and insulate yourself because you have your thing and you hate the fact that, this thing might interfere or is perceived as better or it can't be as good as what I like. It's, it's this fucking, it's insane. It's kind of, it's insanity. It is insanity. And it, you want to, and it's cult-like, it's cult-ish. You want to participate in this thing you fucking worship, you worship at the altar of it, not even thinking, not even realizing what you're saying. And you become like, I think you become a worse person. And I'm like, I do not want to be that. That is horrifying to me because you just, you're not healthy. You're not healthy physically, mentally, emotionally. And uh, it's a scary thing. And so many people indulge in that on a daily basis. And I just, I can't do that. I was like, fuck that. No. Oh, <laughs> no. No. Solid, I'm not going to talk to someone in chat any different than I would face-to-face -face trolls. Yeah, just, yeah. And, and the thing is, like, these people, like, online, where they have this very aggressive behavior, like these keyboard warriors, or whatever you want to call them, or whatever, trolls, like, they're cowards because they would never actually say these things to you in public. Like, the confer they just won't. They don't. Like, majority. I mean, I'm sure one of them will. will, will, will these fucking true psychopaths, sociopaths, yes. But majority, the, the majority of these people are cowards. You know, and that's more into the going to the troll thing. But, you know, kind of back to the cults. It's just, uh, yeah, there's cultish behavior in everything that you can possibly perceive. People become obsessed. And it goes back to just, people want to be a part of something. And when they feel like they're finally a part of something, they want to be uh, very protective over it. And they don't want to share it with only a, a, a select few of people because they, in their minds, the only one that can truly appreciate it or critique it or what have you. And they become nasty. They become very nasty. I think that's what happens. Yeah, Chris, these cowards wouldn't say shit face. They just don't. Yeah. And so I'm. Uh, did you see Satanjit? Did you see the cat that fell from the second? Uh oh, sorry, I did see that. I did, I did. The cat's good, right? Cat's good. Yeah. There is a YouTube channel that I uh watch that breaks apart movies on a line, a line by line hills <gasps> by line breakdowns to find every little nitpicky thing that's rocking movies. Well, I do see the value in that level of critique. I also think that uh sets such an, an insane standard that you end up liking. Now that's true. Like you know, I don't, I don't want to bring up anything, but the. I want to say specific. I want to say specific names because I don't want to bring the wrath of their people down on us. That's the last thing I want to do. I am. I am extremely small. I am minute compared to some of these these things. But like those those types of criticism. Like my my videos, I try to have fun with it with the scene by scene. I'm over exaggerating. I'm having fun. Like you know, I'll go and I'll talk about a film. And I'll I'll deconstruct and like present you what I like, what I what I'm mixed on, what I don't like. You know. But the, the but the, but but the you know the scene by scenes, the spoiler reviews, they're just more for fun. That's what they've always been. Whether I like the movie or I mixed on or I dislike or hate it, um, but there are those those critics who they they are they they're very nitpicky. Well, they'll like show you like and every film has flaws. Even the greatest films in the world, even the ones that people would say objectively these movies are masterpieces. Even the greatest masterpiece has flaws, technical flaws, story flaws, plot holes. They all do. But there are definitely those people, and I agree with you, Vanny. Who, who focus on just the the sins, the flaws of the movie, and it's just like at that point you can't enjoy anything. And it's that kind of, and that, and that, and that that's and that is incorporated and wormed its way into, I don't know, cinephiles, film culture, film appreciation, whatever you want to call it, fandom, that. Everything is bad with the exception of these few things. These are of quality. The rest of this stuff is stupid and you're stupid for liking it. Like, that's dumb. Like, I don't, main, I don't like that. I've always maintained. Again, that's why I've always say. We can agree, disagree. Like what you like. Dislike what you dislike. You know. I'm going to be talking about Malignant tomorrow. And a lot of people, 
love and are liking that movie, and I get why, I understand why, and there's stuff I like about it too. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk some shit <laughs> about the film. But I never want this to, this place. That was one of my objectives: this to be a toxic community, and it's not. Thank, it's not. Definitely, it's not. Um, and I'm very appreciative for that. But you know, I just you know, it's but you have these communities which become these things, which is fucked up and sad. Pro, good to see you. We're gotten serious. We're getting serious right now. Uh, I guess, yeah, I kind of felt that way with the uh, direct PlayStation has been going the last three years. There's four ways to do with studio success, and I feel there's them not happy in the types of games they are coming out with their platforms and new consoles because it just seems that it's produced and created to fit a certain demographic or group of people to fill an agenda. And they're running, and many new titles are terrible, so it can be that kind of thing. Feels like. Yeah, now I mean, to each their own. I mean, I've liked a lot of their titles, a lot of the more dramatic and story based things, but, you know, we can agree, disagree. Deadpool, thank you for the 10 base. Thunder Lee. Even Resident Evil fans feel like cult because they all want Resident Evil 1 and 4, and I'm here like, I love Jane. Yeah, I don't, yeah uh, I'll tell you what, man. Um, that's a good point because I think Resident Evil 4, the remake started, they rebooted it, par partially the remake. Um, and that was because they were, I guess it was also in due, due to reaction to Resident Evil 3 remake, but, and they want to make sure that it's more closer to 4, but at the same time, I don't want Re Resident Evil 4 again. You know, I don't want the same exact game again. Yeah, you know, I would like to see if they tried something different with four personally, but yeah, these th people it needs to be this way, it has to be told, and it's like, you know. It'll always be Resident Evil 4. Black Citizen, thank you for resubscribing. Appreciate that. Very, very kind of you. Very, very kind. Five months in a row. Fifteen total. Five months in a row. Thank you very much, Black Citizen. Good to see you. Uh, we witnessed on January 6th a culture and overthrow US government because they believe in couples. Exactly. They want to be a part of the team. They want to be part of that group. Agreed. Yeah. Hi, Rage Rose Coast. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Can I remember think of the five base? How many times have we vehemently disagreed over movies? I know exactly. I never give you a hard time over it, and you uh, don't do it to me. Exactly. That's what I just want to, you know, I want to maintain that. I want to maintain that. I feel like I have, and I'm very happy about that. One of the things I'm truly proud of with this community and this content that is as vehemently as we can disagree, and we do. We will tomorrow. Uh, I like that we can st still be very amicable. Be friends. Yeah, what I miss? Tips for your. <laughs> In case you want all the games from Sony Showcase 3 were potentially good. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like everything we saw with the, the showcase. Uh, you may get aware of having a black woman look at you like, but Kratos being voiced by dude. I know, I know, exactly. All those fucking people. Irony. Ironic. And Kratos isn't real. They're like, you know, I love it because that's their excuse. You know, there wouldn't be any black girls in Norse mythology. Nor would they be, nor would there be a fictional Greek god who kills them all. <laughs> It's like Kratos does, you know, no, he's not real. And you, oh, God. <laughs> and it's an adaptation of mythology. Oh, fuck. I know, it's so fucking hard. Because I know people are probably complaining about it. I know that Fat Thor, I guess they, the Fat Thor distracted them, though I imagine they'll, they'll be moving on to her so, so shortly, if they haven't already done so. <laughs> Kratos is real. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> so, uh, game companies, please stop only showing cutscenes in movies to tell us nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Project Eve. Is Project Eve is like that? Is that uh, is that Parasite Eve? It feels like a spiritual success to Parasite Eve. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. For example, they took a single line Star Wars Force Awakens and spent the same time explaining how it absolutely ruined Han Solo. Oh, of course they do. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's like, that's not how the Force was. Which what line was it? Was this not how the Force works? I love that line. But yeah, I know. It's just like, man, you can't enjoy nothing. They don't want, and they don't want you to enjoy it either because they want, you know why? You know why? Because they want to make you as miserable as they are. That's what it is. That's truly what it is. Thor is a big boy. He's a big, thick boy. Hell yeah, he is. Yeah, I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know. There, there's YouTube channels out there, and I don't want to say who they are. I got to be careful with what I, who I say. I got to be careful with who I say. So. Yeah, but Black Citizen, thank you again for subscribing. Do appreciate that. Very, very kind. Very, very kind. But yeah, no, I mean that that that's what I've been saying. You know, cultish a lot, fandom, religion, politics, everything. Anything can be turned to a cult or have cult like um, uh, aspects to it. And it's and it when it comes down to it's just and I get it. I mean, all humans feel this. All humans feel this. They feel the need to be a part of something. They want to be part of a community. And once they feel in, accepted, and they will, in some cases, they will go to extremes to defend it. 
and their position within it to try to feel like they need to legitimize themselves. That's what happens. So, yeah, gotcha. But no, it's an excellent question, Maisel. It inspires a really good topic. Really, it's a really good topic of discussion. Excellent question. Excellent. Uh, oh, this is going. <laughs> Here's another one. Another great question. What is the pettiest thing you've done to a person you didn't like? This came to mind, and I never said, I never told the story, but this was in, um, I don't feel bad about it because fuck them. <laughs> I still petty about it. But this was in middle school, I want to say. This was in middle school. And there was this one kid. I mean, we always had bullies, but there was this one kid who was just a, just a bully. He was a straight up bully. He was just weird and, you know. He was dealing with issues and stuff. Uh, and he wasn't that bright. He wasn't that smart. He was like, he was like you know, prototypical. Um, thank you for the five biddies. Bad shield side note, just watch a video about Norse. Expect expert. And he's shocked at how things like Marvel and the Game God War influenced the pictures of Norse mythology and how far off Mount Dickens actually is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so different now. People are like, I mean, Kratos isn't real. <laughs> well, of course, it's very, very different. They're all different. I mean, it's just, it's, it's re inter interpretations, reinterpretations. And probably even the, this Norse expert, they probably, you know, that, that the interpretations of Norse mythology have changed for decades, hundreds of years since they are initially created and crafted. So that's what happens. But, uh, so uh, back to my, back to my story. Pettiest thing I've ever done. Middle school, bully, asshole. Uh, just, just, just that kind of kid. Just a fun, not very bright, kind of a punk, just a punk kid. And <laughs> to get back at him. So it was an art class. It was an art class. And, uh, we had these, you know, folders basically, which contained all of our projects and artwork or whatever is for like, is like, great. Like you need this, you need this. I remember like, it was kind of thing. You need to have all this in there because at the end of the year, it'll be a big part of your grade. And I will grade you based on this folder of all your stuff in it. <laughs> and so and we opened them up on the rack. I think like one day I stayed afterwards for some reason. I can't remember. I think it was I don't remember why. I think it was, I think it may have been like the last class of the day. Maybe that I think that's what it was. I was finishing up something. And I was putting um my folder back or whatever. I think it was like the last one out the door or something. And that Bully's folder of all his stuff was there. I just fucking took that shit. <laughs> I just fucking took his folder. I put it in my backpack, walked out of the school, whoop, threw in the dumpster. <laughs> fucking threw his shit in the dumpster. And I guess he failed the class because he didn't have any of that. He just didn't have his, his stuff. I'm like, yeah, fuck him. Hey, listen, he wasn't going to do well anyway. <laughs> Can we see baby juice? I don't have a picture. I don't have a picture. Let the hate flow through you. Thank you, Deadpool, for the 10 minutes. Savage. And so I I pretty much not, like, yeah, because I think it, art is a class, like, you have to, like, try really hard to fail it. Because, you know, it's all interpretive. But that was, like, the grade. The folder was, you need the folder. You need to have this. And I went, fuck that. <laughs> and I fucking threw his folder out. And so I think I was the one who made him fail the class. <laughs> Because he tried to explain to the teacher, like, I don't know. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, 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 right, right. I always told you, you don't listen to fucking directions. And so, yeah, he failed the class because they didn't believe him. <laughs> they didn't fucking believe him. <laughs> and so I probably affected his, I could have affected his life. I don't know. Uh, Mordecai, I think it would be. Yeah, I know he wasn't a, uh, a character. That's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, that's a pretty dark side chat. Listen, man, I, the pettiest thing I ever did. I'm being honest with you, chat. I'm sure the guy's doing fine now. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't even remember the guy's name. It's been so long. It's so far removed. I think his first name was Nick. I think his first name was like Nick something. Yeah. But, uh, Plattree's Jubilee was Josh. <laughs> no. Danny, thank you for the Welcome to the stream. Juicy Destroyer Bullies. I fucking, I, I mean, I fucked him up. I got my revenge. <laughs> I got my I am Nick. No! There it is. There it is. Revealed. Do you remember that, Nick? Remember when I did that, you Spectre? And now you live on Twitch. We have a surprise for you, Chris. Here's Nick. Oh, God. Mordecai, the committee. That man now uh, works as a janitor at Taco because I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I, I could have. I, it's hard to see, like, what happened. I, the things, I don't even remember his name. I guess I could look up. I think my mom kept my old yearbooks. I'm sure he's there. I can probably look him up or something, but I don't know. No, not that. Not Nick Diaz. No, <laughs> not that Nick. But uh, yeah, I think I think I fucking made that guy fucking failed the class because that was the one thing. He's like, as long as you have this folder, you're good. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> I threw that out. And it was like, you know, the time where we have to like turn in the folders and shells. Like, no, 
And so, yeah, I, I made, I failed. I basically made him fail that class. You know, so that was pretty good. I think that, that would, that's a pretty petty thing to do. That's pretty petty. I almost did that with, with someone's instrument once, but I thought that was going too far. I didn't end up doing it, though, because I thought, nah, that's too cruel um, because they were such a piece of sh- a shit human being. And I was like, nah, I can't do that. Taking out, like, part of their saxophone going whoop. But I, did, I didn't do that one. Didn't do that one. Didn't do that one. Folder? Absolutely. <laughs> God, I didn't realize it's a morality chat. I didn't realize even though he's a piece of shit, that's not the right thing to do. But I was like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and I, to this day, I'm like, yeah, he fucking deserved it. I didn't care. <laughs> it's like, listen, he, ain't, he wasn't doing good in school anyway. Another, another fail wasn't going to help. It wasn't going to hurt him at that point. Was not going to hurt him. So that, that, that's my big one that I, like came to mind immediately. Metal Gear Juicy Scholastic Infiltration. I did a good job. Yes. Snake, 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 snake. Where's your folder? Oh, my Lord. That was good for me. Then later, my breakup, I had applied to have my ex and best friend to hate each other out of the pettiest. Damn, it worked. Damn, there you go. Because soon as I snapped my brother's hockey stick in half once because he locked my sister's basement. Damn, it didn't really work out because he shot my Xbox. Whoa, that's a little aggressive. Man, siblings, man. Fucking siblings. Was it satisfying? Oh, fuck yeah, it was satisfying. Hell fucking yeah, it was satisfying, Spock. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I loved it because I was like, I don't know where it is. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know where it is. <laughs> I said this to myself. Tee hee hee, tee hee hee. They had the thought to make it just as bad. Yeah, I mean, I did. I did think about it. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it with the saxophone, but I did do it with the folder. Should have did it. Hee hee. I probably should have. Yeah, fuck that guy. I mean, you can. Goddamn right, I did bad shields. <laughs> Stop having so many babies. Nah, you can have babies. That's his, you know, that's his thing. But thank you, Dr. Amber, the 200 biddies. Thank you, another batch of another five biddies. Very kind. A bunch of evil folks in this channel. A lot of evil people here. Straight to shoe. Not even my former co-worker. He worked as a manager he didn't like, so he bought a fish at the supermarket and put a hole in the wall. Oh! The place stank like rotting fish. Manager found out who it was. It was you. <laughs> no, that's great. That's a good one. Let the hate flow. Do it. Do it. Papa Palpatine was speaking through me, chat. That guy watching the stream right now, grab straight. I'd be like, he might. That, what a fucking coincidence. If that is like at this point, if he, if if it's like, if he somehow stumbled upon my stream, which would be a hell of a coincidence. It's like a one in a billion. I don't know, crazy number, right? But he somehow did, and he comes to kill me. Be like, all right, this is fair. I'd be like, this is fair. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta wait for him for so long, and I can't believe that he fi- figured it out. Like I ruined, like I ruined his life. But who knows? Maybe he was into art, and I fuck. I mean, it could have been. Because maybe he really loved art, and I completely destroyed that. That could have been it. I could have destroyed his love for art because I took that away from him. Maybe. Maybe he shouldn't have been such a piece of shit. <laughs> a lot of maybes out there, right, chat? Because uh, I hit a bully with a Tonka truck, so I know I bet. Damn. Beat him up. Beat him up. Clad, when I was uh, grade six, one of my classmates was being an asshole, so I grabbed him by the neck and threw him a couple feet. Damn, there you go. That's the good shit right there. Be aggressive. Shut your Chris bully. I mean, you know, in a way, in a way I was. I punched an annoying kid in the bus with the hand bigger than your face joke. Never bothered me again. <laughs> Damn. So I had that, you smoked a whole pack of candy cigarettes. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was a good day. Good day. <laughs> Would he even recognize you? Probably. Probably. I'm Nick. Oh, God. There it is. I knew it. Yeah, I knew you'd come back to get me. He was a boy, so yeah, fuck him. Thank you, Mordecai. Another buddy, Chris, gets a DM tonight from Nick Cannon. That was me. No, he wasn't black. I remember he was, he was like a skater guy. Again, this was like early 2000s. This was like, two, I guess, I guess it was like mid-2000s. Oh, you were like middle school. So, yeah, no, it was mid-2000s. Yeah, so it was like 2005, 6-ish, I want to say. So he was like, you know, more like a skater kid. Savage. Absolutely savage. Man, we're creating our own what if. I know, right? That'd be fucking awesome. You tried to destroy the next Picasso. I could have done that. Who knows? What if Chris didn't do that? I, I think of that. What if um, <clears throat> I was a Nick guy, became the next Hiller because he couldn't get into art school. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. That would be a, oh my God. I would feel really bad about that. <laughs> I'd be like, whoops, whoops. <laughs> Oh my god, that was, that was like, oh shit, <laughs> I accidentally created the new Hitler, I'm too sweet of a brownie to be petty, Oh, that's so cute, that's so cute, 
Yeah, I, I created Chet. I tried Chet Hazy. Chet Hazy. Chet Hanks, Chet. Emily Macon, guys, she's like by flirting with other guys, going on a date with a guy for free food. I've done my many petty things. I feel like a lot of women have done that. I feel like that's a common thing. <laughs> Using your feminine wiles against us. You know how to manipulate us. But the folder story is the one that came up to me immediately. What, was, what, if, what if Chris created Hitler? <laughs> oh, damn. You are petty now. He's so sweet. You brownie. I think not. Oh, my God. What if Chris creates Hitler? The next Hitler. I love it. Mm. Did you watch Ready for the Zombie? I have not yet done it because I was not here um, for most of this week. I was visiting my family. But I will be doing a watch party for it along with episode six this Wednesday. So we'll do back, back both of those back to back. Should be fun. Mm -hmm. I'm innocent. <laughs> What if it turns out that you're screwing over that kid to do COVID app? Uh, to, uh, that kid, oh, COVID app, man. Yeah, it's like butterfly effect, right? Yeah, it's like the butterfly effect. Where a butterfly lands on this, you step on a butterfly, and it causes a fucking tsunami somewhere. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, go on. Uh, this is another good question from this one. I, I, I had a hard time. To, I just didn't, I don't know enough about this, the music industry, so it was hard for me to answer. You guys might have more to say about this than I do. But what do you think is going to be this generation's R. Kelly? I guess this next generation's R. Kelly. I suspect Drake. He's a rapper, if you don't know who he is. I do know who he is. There are concerns surrounding his friendship with Millie Bobby Brown. Plays Eleven in, in Stranger Things chat. She's in the Godzilla movies. Uh, she plays uh, Nola Holmes in the Netflix Nola Holmes series. She said once, uh, she once said in an interview that she and Drake text and he gives her advice on boys. <laughs> I hope these stay speculations, though. Like, there is no one that came to mind. You know, I heard that stuff about Drake and shit. Like, I don't, I don't, like, I heard about it. Like, I even read an article that confirmed. I just don't, I don't know. So I can't say. Garcia's our generation. That's true. I guess, like, the, what's the next generation's R. Kelly? Um, and, like, I couldn't think of anyone. Like, I'm thinking, like, crazy fucking singers. I mean, like, Ted Nugent, when it just comes out where he's just like, bah! He's like, I like little boys or something like that. Like, I expect him to, like, lose his fucking mind one day. He kind of already has. But maybe, like, him, you know, going to, like, a, just a racist, pedophile escapades or something. Some shit. Like, that's guy, like, ah, yeah, he went crazy. Like, yeah, I believe that. But, like, there's no one. I don't know enough to, to say. Jake and Logan Paul probably says, no, you're running. You need to stop with that. And I just don't know enough about it. I have no idea. Kanye? Well, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I, I forgot about Kanye. That's a really good pick. Yeah, Kanye. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Jake's nowhere near. Because I don't, I don't even know. I know I've heard about the Millie Bobby Brown thing, but I, I don't even know enough details to even say anything. Chrissy Teigen is healing R. Kelly? Damn. A little baby becomes next R. Kelly. Look, just check around because some people told me check his music out and like his music really sucks. Fair enough. Drake's really out here grooming one of the most recognizable kid stars. I don't think so. I just don't. I don't under. You know, I don't know enough about it to say. So I. I, I but Kanye, that's a good answer. I was like, yeah, I could see him doing some fucking weird shit, just continuously, to, just dissolve, devolve. Definitely. What a guy. I think of the video. Great Chris Cause Command and Conquer Red Alert Three to happen in real life when it's Tim Curry. No. No. I would like. I would not. I agreed. I don't want another new R. Kelly or anything like that. I just don't know. I don't know the hippity hops, the R and B's chat. The Rappins, as it's called. I believe that is what the kids say on the street. The Rappins. I don't know. R. Kelly married a 16-year-old uh, five years of screen artist kid working with him. Yeah. They all, it's that open fucking open secret. They all know what he is, but they're like, well, money. Same thing with Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I don't know. I hope not. I hope, I, the last thing I want is another one. But I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about, like, musicians who are like, oh, like yeah, a little sketchy. You're like a little fucking sketchy. You know? So, I don't know. I don't know. Which I kind of like my, my oblivious nature. is just like what happens is like, I have no fucking clue. You know? I mean, Kanye, I know just because he always inserts himself because he's a narcissist in the news. So, like, if he fucking does something, I'm like, yeah, all right. Seems, seems to be his MO. But again, I don't know. I don't know, Joe. And this... Is, I was going to say, color me brownie. And this is color me Hazel's last question. We can all agree, broccoli is the superior vegetable. Yes, I've been eating a lot of broccoli, Chad. By the way, I've really changed my diet as I moved into my new apartment. I have so much more energy. So much more energy. I'm just feeling, like, really good about it. 
I've been eating like a lot more vegetables, chat. Uh, broccoli, uh, green beans, tomatoes, red onion. Um, I'm just been take responsibility. I didn't. I said I was going to, but I didn't. <laughs> so I don't need to. Um, but yeah, I just like I really changed my diet. I've been in a lot of broccoli though, chat. Mostly like the vegetables I've been going for recently have been broccoli, tomatoes, like little red cherry tomatoes. I yeah, red onion, um, green beans. Those have been pretty much the big ones. And I do like a little little lemon zest on the broccoli. Get a little, oh, nice little, nice little, uh, ooh, a little, little sour taste, but it's nice. And then, you know, with my chilled green bean salad, it's, it's the red onions, it's the green beans, it's the cherry tomatoes, and it's a little olive oil, a little bit of black pepper. It's very good. Well, it's delicious. It is. It is. Thank you! Mark of the Pity. I know we pass at the Petty Stuff, but I legit can't remember the Petty Stuff I did. But it'd be a very few because... because I was a child who didn't want to get any trouble at home. I was always the kid that got shit on, even my friends. It sucked. Damn, man. That happens. But you grow as a better person. You grow as a person. And fuck them. Fuck those people. Yeah, fried squash. Like, I just been, I just have, I've had so much more energy. I just feel really, really good. Like, really. Like, a diet is brew. I've been exercising more. I've been losing weight, actually. Like, my apartment complex. I'll get back to the question in a second. My apartment complex has this giant fucking just trail around this lake, and it's awesome. It's so goddamn good. So it's all new. It's a really nice neighborhood. And I was like, oh, my God. And so, yeah, I've just been walking a lot more. I've been eating really well. I've been, and I've been, obviously, I've been meeting. I've been having my, my, my chicken, my roasted chicken chat, my beef tips. I've been having some pasta. I've had some pasta, too. It's very good. But I'm having nice portions. Nice portion. Portion control is important. But I'm just feeling really good. I feel like I have a lot more energy nowadays. You know, I'm not drinking heavily as much. I'm having a little bit of red and white wine. I will get some uh, liquor in, in a bit. But yeah, I'm just feeling good. I'm feeling really f Pesto? Oh, yeah, pesto is great. Pesto is great. Bad thing with the 10 Have you seen the Way Too Sexy music video, Kristen? I think I've heard it. I think I know a little bit. Wine daddy. I am very much a wine daddy now, Jen. Mm. My red burgundy wine and my white wine. Mm. So good. It's good. Um, but uh, but no, back to your question. So I've been, just, you know, my diet's improved. So I've seen this bro broccoli. I've been eating a shit ton of it. Broccoli boy. Is a good boy, chat. But what would you say? This is coming to Hazel's question. But what would you say is your least favorite vegetable? And there's like some go-tos because they just like, this is a sh it's like, they're just shitty. They're just shitty vegetables, chat. There are. And number one, iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce, like I like leafy greens, I like spinach, I like romaine lettuce, you know, they're very good for you, but like iceberg has no nutritional value, it's just water, that's what it is, and it's just, it's just bad, there's nothing to it, there's no vitamins in it, it's this cheap, it's, 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 like people eat that to make themselves feel like they're being healthy, but you're not, you're not getting any nutrition in there, iceberg lettuce is awful, 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 and it's always used, it's always used by so many fucking businesses because it's cheap, because it's so cheap. So, iceberg lettuce, a mushroom. I love, uh, Katie, gonna see Katie. I love mushrooms. I can't, I love the fungus. I love the fun guy. So, I'd have to disagree. I love me some mushrooms. But, like, iceberg lettuce is definitely number one. I'm like, yeah, fuck this. And uh, I'm not, a, I don't like celery. I'm like, you know, can we always think of celery like as a side? You know, it's like you get like celery and carrots. Like, carrots are much, much better. I don't like celery. It's kind of like the ice, it's kind of like the iceberg lettuce situation again. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a lot nutritional value for... I don't think there is for for so I think most of it, it's water again. So, you better eat the iceberg. Like, no, I'll eat fucking romaine. I'll eat spinach. I'll eat very many other leafy greens. There are some great ones, you know, but iceberg and lettuce and I think celery are just like, these are just kind of shitty. This is kind of shitty. Iceberg lettuce and a mixed green salad. Nah. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Mixed green salad should be romaine and spinach and some other ones. They're much better, you know? Beans can suffer from the same phase as most other crops like in interstellar. Beans! I like beans. I like black beans. I like black beans, Jim. Mm. I was kind of a uh, I was kind of a mix. I would do quite a bit of a petty stuff. Oh, back in the petty. People were like, I don't want to talk about this petty stuff still. Back then, I remember I took food from one of the fellow high schoolers from lunch and then dumped it, dumped in the bed. Damn! Or took some books from one of the other because I had problem with since they were a gospel and I threw in the street of the park and I did some fuck. Some fucked up stuff got me in trouble a couple times, but for the most part, I did my best way to stand in trouble. So that's good. Most of us will hate my gut, dude. My health. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. I'm sorry. Eat your kale. Kale. Kale is excellent. Kale is very good. Yeah, I'll, I'll have all those over. You know, iceberg lettuce. Alex, I love mushrooms. Make a meal with them. Uh, then mushrooms, chicken alfredo. There's so many. Yeah, mushrooms are delicious. Stuffed mushrooms. Um, 
shiitake mushroom chef, mushroom burgers, you know, like those big fucking portobello, just, just no, no meat, just the mushroom, the big old cap. I'm going to make some of those soon. I got to do iceberg pesto. No, not even that. I won't even make it, that won't even make it better. I don't like to say it. Celery, it's hard to eat, and it's not even all that great for you. Yeah. Yeah. To me, kale and broccoli are the worst. No. Broccoli's really good. And there's great ways to prepare broccoli, too. Mm-hmm. I don't eat a lot of green veggies. I like onions, potatoes, carrots, pumpkins. Are technically fruit. I eat a lot of pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are very healthy for you. High in zinc, which you need. Brussels sprouts and okra, ew. I, uh, be, it's a... I, I don't I'm not I'm not big on okra. I agree with you with that. I like I do like Brussels sprouts. I'm sorry, but there's a great way to prepare them. I've done it before, like my Caesar salad. It's very delicious. Uh, beets. I've had some beet salads which have been mwah, very good. You you can like beets and by themselves are kind of gross, but if you can you can you could you could do some some cool things of, of beets. You need like you need some leafy greens mixed in with some good cheese. So some good cheeses, and you're good. There he goes, go buffalo wings. See, that's the thing, man. That's what I always think. Of. I always associate celery. It's the fucking wing vegetable, where it's like I'd rather just have the carrots. I'd rather just have the fucking carrots than the celery. I just don't like it. Onions, big no. See, I'm, I'm I'm all about the onion. I love uh, onions. I love onions. Hell yeah, they make everything taste better. We gotta be crispy. I know it's big. I know it's big in the south and the southwest. You love that fried okra? Yeah, that's nah, not my thing. I had that's remember I had like fried okra was when I was going to um, Texas State when I was going for my masters, and uh, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I thought it was I just I did not like it. We are not canceling onions, absolutely fucking not. No, I love onions. I eat onions of a lot of my meals. I have I mean I use red onion. I use the sweet onions, yellow onions. Hell yeah! I mean for the for the, my roasted chicken. Fucking cut up an onion, dice that, you know, fucking put on the chicken. Oh, so good. With the with the, the chilled green bean salad, I, I take a whole fucking red onion, chop that up. Nice, big, thick, put that in. Oh, it's so good. Onions are very healthy for you. They're very good. Especially red onion. It's it's great. It's great for you. Mm-hmm. Can't, we are not canceling fucking ogres are like onions. They have layers. All right? If you like Shrek, then you got to like onions. They go hand in hand, chat. All right? Yeah, so I'll tell you, so you know, onions can be used in so many great ways, but onions are very good for you. Mm -hmm. I love the blooming onion from Arby's. I'm not in the fry. Okay, I'm not a big fried food guy. You know? Not in the fried onions. But I like them prepared all different ways, like sauces and pastas. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jason, it has been a while. Thank you. Nine months. You just front pooped out of Twitch, baby. Good to see you. Hope you're doing very well. I was gone. I was gone for a week visiting fam, the family, if you will. And I'm talking about vegetables, shitty vegetables. I'm talking about some good ones, but those shitty ones. Celery, iceberg lettuce, get out of here. I'll kick him in the curb. Broom him fast, Chad. As Norman Osborne once said, as William Dafoe once said, Chad. That was be mine. Yeah. Rock and layers. Make it burn out squash noodles and mushroom sage. Like, that sounds delicious. Now, that's a fucking meal and a half right there, Rock and You're doing it right. You're doing it right. Yeah. But yeah. That is that is the last question, chat. So we have a nice debate to what we uh, what vegetables we like, we don't like. But yeah, I'm, again, I'm standing by it. Celery and iceberg lettuce. I don't think that's controversial. I don't think no, no one's gonna die in the hill. Uh, no one's gonna. No one should die in the hill for iceberg lettuce. And I don't think we have too many people who are big celery defenders. So I was like, I think I picked well. I think I my 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 shitty vegetables I picked well. So that's pretty good. Someone said eggplant. Apparently, eggplant. Even though I like eggplant, it can. It, it absorbs, like, if you, like, cook it, like, I'm going to cook it with this thing, or it absorbs, like, all the fat stuff, like, within its folds and shit. So it can turn into a very unhealthy thing, actually. But I do like eggplant. I like celery. But do you love it? Will you die on the hill for celery? Yeah, even on a taco? Uh, iceberg lettuce? No, because there's better, there's better, there's better um, uh, toppings for, like, a taco, you know? I mean, you could, you could, you could, you could chop up. You could chop. You could definitely do spinach and romaine lettuce, and you can put that on there. That would be great. That would be perfect. You know, uh, if you want like a veggie, or onions. You could definitely put onions on a taco and stuff like that. Like, there's all alter there's alternate things. Able lasagna is good. I agree. I agree. Yes. No fifty questions. Not been answering all the questions. We've had a lot of great questions. Choose your veggie weapons. Yeah, broccoli is pretty good for me. I mean, like, no onions. No. Emily, Chris, I ask questions. What are your questions? That was the last of the Patreon questions. I figure we can go ahead and move on to make a little bit of gameplay today, chat. Maybe we'll play um, a little bit of the Jackbox Party Pack, because I know you guys have been wanting to do that. But what is your question? 
How about refried beans? No. No, I like I'm, I'm a, I I'm like beans. I like I like uh, black beans. I usually I have I buy that often. I like to have that as a side. Very good, either with um, yeah, anything really. It's just, it's kind of, it's just that kind of universal perfect side. You can have it with breakfast food. You can have it with eggs. You can have it with uh, beef or chicken or fish or whatever. It's very good. But outside of black beans and like garbanzo beans, kidney beans. You know, those those be my other choices. Three bean salads, of course. But no, I don't refried beans. That refried beans are not good for you. They're tasty, but they're not good for you. No, no onions. But I'm not a big refried beans guy. Gameplay, indeed. Toy Mario Jackbox, you fucking better no. I can't do that. It's too it's too it's too much. You go into two in the morning. Probably not today. Because <laughs> we've been streaming for five hours. We've been this is a big this, I gave you a thick, girthy, well endowed class in the glass cast for you. a little sass chat. But uh, we'll definitely, um, we'll definitely get, we'll get, we'll play some gameplay today. Yeah, we to get thick eggplants. Oh yeah, chili dogs. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not Sonic. No. Preferred lettuce for burgers and salad. Preferred lettuce for burgers and salads, Chris. Um, romaine. Romaine. If I if I had the choice to like put a specific, uh, like for salad, no, like for straight, like for burgers, yeah, romaine lettuce or spinach. No, no question. Oh, yeah, no question. Yeah, oh, my God. I mean, even if you put, like, a little, little spinach with the butter in there. Like, if you do it in the pan, you, you melt the spinach, that's fine. It's far healthier than something, even with the butter, than uh, iceberg. And with salads, oh, I'm all about the romaine and uh, spinach salads. That's what I always did for my Caesars. Yeah. Like, just like, I like all beans. Fair enough. When will you do a watch party for the Marvel Zombies? That was my second favorite episode on the Dark Strange one. Wednesday. I'll do back those back-to-back -back on Wednesday. And then you have black beans in my Herman meals. <laughs> yeah, that's right, my Herman meals. Yeah, that's right, your turkey, your ground turkey, black beans, and mixed veggies. Hell yeah, very nice. Very good. Very good, very good, Jeff. Would you date a fan? Do you think your fans are cute, pretty? Uh, you, you know, it's it's that, it's the kind of thing, I, I have to meet the person, you know, like to truly, like, those kind of, like, online relationships are hard to maintain. And I have to, like, really, truly, like, meet the person. That's kind of thing. And I, you want to be careful. You want to be careful of getting me. I mean, people have done it. People have gotten relationships with fans, and they've worked out, and it's been great. But that's kind of thing where, you know, uh, it kind of goes to my previous question about boundaries. Yeah. Like, you want to be careful of that kind of thing. You know? So. I'm just not in the. I'm just not looking for a relationship right now at the moment. Um, you know, I'm just moving into a new place, getting all set up, and working on this new content. But yeah, that's kind of how I'm feeling at the moment. Look at Stramas. Uh, what's the, excuse me? What's uh, what's the, what's the Stramas? <laughs> I mixed up all my words there. Uh, what's the longest stream you would do? Probably twelve hours. I don't know if I'd ever do a 24-hour stream. Maybe, maybe someday. I just feel like there's, what's the point, you know? I feel like when you do a 12-hour stream, like, that's half a day. That's half a day. That's pretty good. And at that point, it's like, okay, what are you going to accomplish? Um, unless maybe it's for, like, a charity type of thing. Maybe I'll do, like, a 24-hour stream for, like, a charity type event. But I think the longest I could potentially go for is, like, 12 hours. Like, I've done, like, probably the longest I've ever done is, like, I want to say eight and a half. Because I've definitely done streams that have been eight and a half hours. I know. Um, and I feel like, okay, I hit eight and a half, and I was tired, but I was like, okay, I could definitely I could definitely do the last three and a half hours. I could do that. Yeah. Anyone else hate Ron's? I love I love onions prepared in all sorts of ways. No, other than other than fry. Because you nasty. Why am I nasty for what I do? What I do? So you get no lettuce when you get get no. And I I mean I do I I never get the lettuce on there. I mean it, it, what's on there is on the burger. Rather what, what I rather have it be, you know, um, like romaine or spinach. Of course, but I'm gonna eat it. If the iceberg is on the burger, I would rather not have the iceberg. But I'm not gonna say take the iceberg off. You know that's kind of what. At least that's what I would do. Yeah, romaine is too expensive for fast food places. I'm going to see your salad. Uh, Remain lettuce for burgers, iceberg lettuce for salads, or no other option. No! Spinach is great. Spinach is spinach is excellent leafy green. Firewolf, welcome back to the stream. Firewolf, what, did I miss you? I'm sorry, Firewolf. Firewolf, welcome! I hope you're doing very well, Firewolf. Good to see you. Apologies for missing you earlier. Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. I've just been, I've been, uh, ink, 
Ink bust draft. Ink, ink, ink bust. I'm playing ink bust. Thank you for following me, Huckleberry. Welcome to stream. Which yeah, you, I'm I'm dating you. I'm practically married to you, chat. I mean, you're you know, <laughs> kind of. I see you every day. I see you nearly every day. I have to always talk to you. I have to ask how you are. We are practically fucking married. <laughs> How many children have I had with you, chat? How many fun, How many babies have you front pooped out? So many. We are technically already married, chat. Do 17 hours straight. I think I would die. I think if I don't sleep for three days, I think I would die. Isn't that a thing where you don't sleep for three days, you die? I don't want. I don't want to risk that. No distractions. No distractions. Mixed veggies and ground turkey plus black beans and love. That's good. It's good for you. Nice. Wait, you didn't answer the second one. Because I'm sorry. What's the other answer? What's the other question? I missed it. I mean, still. We'll go and repeat it. Go ahead and post it again. I don't see the other one. I don't see it. I don't see it. You want to post it again? Please do so. Uh, Chris eats the burger with hatred for the lettuce. Yeah, yeah. Goddamn right. So you do eat iceberg lettuce. I respect your honor. God damn it. I do. You've you found out my secret. <laughs> uh. I get, I get that, Chris. No distractions. Thank you. Uh, Danny, thank you so much for gifting a sub to Isdu. Thank you, Danny. And Jen, I'm going to give the five biddies. Chris spends every day streaming to pay for all Switch babies. I got a lot of babies, Jen. I got too many babies. It's too much. You listen. I like, uh, I mean, I'll have it, but, you know, I want, I want better lettuce. I get that, Chris. Uh, no distractions, but there are times I do want to test the waters of dating. But there are boundaries we have to lay down while we see if it works out. True. True. There's a lot to discuss. Yeah. Chris, like, I put all the mayo. I put mayo. I do put mayo on my burger. Goddamn right I do. Mayo is delicious. I love it. Firewolf again. Welcome. How was your trip? It was good. It was productive. Stuff that needed to get done got done. Uh, it was nice to relax a little bit, but also to assess and reassess certain things that I do on stream and for content creation. But no, it was, it was, it was a great trip. It was, it was, it was what it needed to be. Exactly what I needed. So I'm 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 feeling great. Thank you for asking. How are you, Firewolf? How is your weekend treating you at the moment? Your Sunday. Your Sunday evening. Inkbust, his name. Your name is now Inkbust. <laughs> so what are we? We're married. <laughs> it's no sex puzzles marriage. They're more realistic than ever. More realistic than ever. Ah, oh, God. That's right. I gotta pay for all these babies. Iceberg less is my bang. Yes. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for the support. Uh, Jaybird, good to see you. What is up, Mr. Zinn? How is it going? Were you able to try that drink? I, mean, I have not yet. Not yet. I will get to it. I will get to it. I was on my trip beforehand, but I will. I'm going to be doing all sorts of concoctions soon, Chad. I'm going to probably go do some shopping tomorrow before I stream. I'm going to get some liquors, liqueurs, if you will. It'll be good. I'll be able to drink them on my stream channel talking about malignant because I have a lot to say. But no, I'm not doing great. Absolute pleasure to have you here too, Jay Bird. And I will get to your recommendations soon enough. Soon enough. Mm, Chris is Dr. Doom and all his. You're all my Latvian children. You really can. I mean, I have enough kids to start a country, I imagine, at this point. Pink sauce. I'm not really pink sauce. Yes. That's true. So much, so much non sex, yet so many babies. It was, it was love making chat, but there was no love in it. It was just making. Making. Anyway, let's go ahead. And uh, what, what are we doing now? I was going to say, I was, answering, oh, I was answering questions. That was right. I think at this point, we can move on. I felt nothing. Yeah, it's marriage. I'm in a relationship with myself, and I'm jealous time. Oh, shit. Chris is twitching at Ken, which is, I got so many babies. Oh, God. They're all quiet. They all want to suckle at once. I only have two nipples, chat. I only have two. It'll be very hard. But what we can do, chat, because I'm, I'm at that point where I'm hungry. I have not eaten today. I had some coffee, I had some coffee chat, and I need some food in my tummy, and I made some chicken earlier, and so I'll be able to have some chicken with some broccoli and some black beans, funny enough, so it'll be good, those nuts, those nuts will be very sore, they'd be like, they look like fucking erasers, you know, like, and not like the little eraser tips on pencils, no chat, like those big fucking erasers. <laughs> <laughs> like those big, the, like the big dumb erasers you get in school, and like you have to use them, and they're always like, they're something you get like going to get the shitty one. They just look like that. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> there has been much suckling on them for quite some time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Look, Harrow, have you already shared opinion on Matrix 4? I'm going to roll about the trailer. A late trailer, because it's not showing something new. That's a good point. 
Vanny also brought that up when we were talking about it via messages. But I actually like the trailer. I I understand, you know, it's very much that like maybe they're they're repeating some stuff because all right, we're gonna kind of go back to basics to what people actually enjoyed about the original movie. But we'll see. I'm hoping that you know it expands it, but not in a dumb way because they did expand it, and that's what that's what we got with Reloaded and Revolution. So I'm hoping for the best. I was I was taken aback by how much I actually liked what I saw. So I'm very skeptical. I think it's good to go in that movie with a lot of skepticism because the last, the you know, the sequels were awful, in my opinion. You know, well, you know, I like the original one. I like the Animatrix. But, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's a wait and see. I was like, okay, you have my curiosity, not my attention. You have my curiosity, not my attention. We'll see. Major Four is a base for me. I don't know. Maybe they could, they could do that, which else could be bad. We'll see. We'll find out. We'll find out. Do you, uh, did you do your metric review? I'm doing that on Tuesday. So I wasn't able to do that before I left and everything because of various things. But I'm doing Malignant. Can I give you a schedule, Chad? I actually, I have my uh, schedule of movies reviews I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. I'm actually, I was like, oh, good. I, I just, like, I thoroughly organized it. And one of the things I was doing on my trip is like, oh, perfect. Like, I got it all planned out. I'm pretty happy about it. But uh, for those of you who are indeed curious, I'll give you a preview for this particular week, Chad. This week, I am doing Malignant. That's Monday, Chad, the movie that just came out. Everyone's fucking talking about it. You have people that absolutely love the film, people that absolutely hate it. And I think that's fascinating. And I want to go into the nitty-gritty details about this movie and, you know, pick your brains about it. And I'll be a spoiler review. That will be a proper, I ha- in order to talk about it, I have to spoil it, so it will be a proper spoiler review. On Tuesday, I will be doing The Matrix, Chad, the 1999 Matrix, which, by the way, if you are curious to hear my thoughts on that movie already, check out my Patreon chat, The Matrix, at the five dollar tier level i believe i think it's the five is that five? no what tier level is that at i think it might be at the uh, no it's at the ten dollar tier level so if you're at the ten dollar tier level chat cape crusader level you have access to that commentary and video reaction right now i want to get a little early preview of how i view the film and then wednesday's film chat will be raiders of the lost ark the first of the indiana jones movies chat which would be really really fun that'll be great mm. Thank you, because there's the five bees. I'm curious how Corey and Martin are going to review it. They plan on reviewing it at all. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure, like, what the total schedule is going to be like, because I know Corey's going to Turkey soon. I, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't even want to say anything. They may or may not review it. I just don't know. I just don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. But, chat, I do want to go ahead and get into some gameplay. We'll only play a couple matches. I am, I'm not going to lie. I'm very fucking hungry. <laughs> I need some chicken. Also, I have, like, a new love chat. I want a little sweetness, a little sweetness in my diet. And I have a nice little a little dessert, and it's chocolate-covered almonds. And they are great. Big fan of the chocolate-covered almonds chat. That's what I've been eating, like, a little bit of red wine. Very nice, very nice. It's been my go-to. Is that Tammy Faye movie? It looks interesting. I want to say that Tammy Faye movie. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Hmm, I don't know. Will you review Spider Man movies leading up to No Way Home? Yeah, yeah. I've reviewed the spot. I've reviewed the Raimi trilogy so far. I think the Spider Man Two review will be the next review going up on my YouTube channel. So, because like Terminator Terminator Two Judgment Day was posted, I think yesterday. Yeah, it will be. It'll be. Um, it'll be Spider Man Two or the day before. It's posted the day before. So you get Spider Man Two. Spider Man Three I already did not that long ago, and then probably in anticipation for the release of um. No Way Home, I will do a number of the Spider-Man films in December. So I'll do Christmas movies like I usually do, but I'll also do like a like two weeks of Spider-Man reviews. So I'll do the Amazing Spider-Man series, I'll do Into the Spider-Verse, and I'll do the Holland uh, films, the two Holland films. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I'll do them all. I'll definitely just do them all, just because it just makes sense, right? Makes it people are like, oh, I want to hear his opinion on all the movies, and now you shall. It'll be great. Timmy Faye movie comes out next week. So there's just a good chance to see oh, I just don't know what that is. I'm not familiar with it. Did I review Scarface? I have not. I have not. Dark or milk chocolate almonds? Uh, go with milk, though. I do want to try the dark chocolate when I go to the grocery store next time, which might happen soon. Because I need to get some more half and half eventually. I'm running low on the half and half. I need to have my coffee. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But now, we can go ahead and get into some gameplay. And again, it'll just be a couple of matches. I think we'll go. Winners! Wow, oh, Jesus! Witness me, Mr. Hamendinger with the raid. Everybody on the dance floor, raid, Mr. Hamendinger. Thank you so much, man. How was your stream? What were you doing? We're just about to move on over, mosey on over to some Jackbox party packs right now. 
This is a non duck pooping rabe, in case you guys didn't know. Rabe, as I like to call it. That means six matches. Is that what that means? It just it just doubled up. <laughs> Saul, good man. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I am witnessing you. Welcome, Raiders. Dippin' Dudes. Good to see you. Hi, Dippin' Dudes. My hands. Welcome, Dippin' Dudes. Jason, did you see the second show of the night? No, so I liked it. It was more of a feeling of Edgar Wright movie. I did not. Maybe we can look, you know, look at that maybe at the end of the stream. We'll check it out at the end of the stream. See what that's about. We also review Venom before Let There Be Carnage. Oh, you shall see. You shall see. Maybe. Maybe I'll not only review Venom, but I'll do a commentary for it. Hmm. You shall see. There's a lot of things. A lot of things in the, in the pipeline, chat. Uh, there was also a second show of The Sopranos. I saw that one. I did see that one. Many saints didn't do it. Tom! Hey, Chris, I watched one of your latest videos. Thought you cut your hair, and I was disappointed. Great to see you. Oh, yeah, so so it's YouTube, right? So what's happening with the YouTube videos, that's actually from a while ago. I made the mistake because I mean, it, was, it was in a period of my life where I was not only streaming almost every single day for, like, six hours. I was also working a full-time job, and... I neglected just uploading and editing all that stuff to YouTube because I just didn't have the time. And uh, so you're seeing stuff that, at this point, came out last November. <laughs> that's from last November. Um, and so that's why my hair is so short in those videos because it hasn't grown yet. Uh, but Alex Bernal has been doing an excellent job of getting the entire backlog up there. Should have should have went with him much earlier, but, you know, I just I wasn't in a place where I... Because I, I, I had so many things going on at the time, and I, you know, that that's just why. So there's a delay of stuff. Eventually, all this stuff will be uploaded someday, you know. But it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. But that's why you notice like the hair difference. I know it's stark. It stands out. It stands out. But no, keep him corporeal, Chad. Keep him corporeal. This hair is very long, though, Chad. It's very long. Ew. I get like knots in the back now. I always try to comb it, but I always get knots throughout the day. And hoits and hoits. But now, my friends. We're gonna, and what's cool about though that at least the people might not have seen all those, and so it's like, oh, it's it is something new for like new people might have come in the last couple months who might not have been watching me in like last November. So you'll be seeing like the most recent gameplay that's coming out will be Demon Souls re remake, which is really fun, and Spider Man Two, my which I think is one of my longest reviews I've ever done. My scene by scene by scene <gasps> by scene breakdown chat for Sam Raimi's 2004 film Spider Man Two. I think that's at least two and a half hours, if not longer. So got yeah, that one. Can I put my hair down? I mean, it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty long in the back, as you can obviously see. You know, I mean, it's pretty long. I mean, it's getting there. I still got a month and a half to grow this thing, Chad. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get. I have to get some hairspray. I gotta get like. I need a woman's touch. I need like a woman to help me like get it all poofy. To get a poofy or something for the like, costume. Maybe when Mia comes back, she can help poof it. Is I gotta look like uh, is that I gotta noosh, is that I, gotta I gotta look like uh, Mel Gibson from Lethal Weapon One, so we'll see. Oh, that's right, Danielle, she can help me with that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. My last haircut? I don't remember. I don't remember. I have no idea. I can't remember. Chris, I need a woman. <laughs> I need a woman. <laughs> Chad, yeah, I need one. Bring one to me. You know what to touch something on there. Damn. <laughs> well, I definitely need one to touch my hair. That one is, that is, that is, yes. That is definite. Number one hair. <laughs> the little Chris is going for. Is this, this is what it is? You have it? Yeah, that's right. Yes, it's fucking nailed it, man. This, I'll show it. This is what I'm, uh, thank you, Deadpool. So if people don't know what I'm talking about. If you might, might be unfamiliar with um, Lethal Weapon 1 or the way Mel Gibson looked in that film, his character Martin Riggs, this is the look I'm going for. I'm hoping I can achieve I think I can get it. I think I just need to, again, I don't know if I can have, he has a lot of hair. He's got a, the, Mel Gibson, you know, he, got, he got a good volume of hair. And like my hair is often slick backed and his is very poofy. And so I think I can do that with hairspray, but this is what I'm going for. Let me show this off. All right, bros, get the hell out of here. Blah, blah. There's that four. There's my thick Thor thickums. Big Daddy Thickums, chat. I love him. I love him. But this is what I'm going with, going for for Mel Gibson. This is what I need to achieve. And it's going to be hard. I feel like I can, like you can't tell, but I have like a lot of fucking hair. I have a lot of hair. And I think I can do it. I think I can do it. 
maybe if I, I mean, I'm, I got a month and a half to go. I'm not cutting this for another month and a half. So I think I can do, I got to blow dry. You got to blow dry it too. You're right. I definitely got to blow dry. Kill bitch. Good to see you. Vanessa, how are you doing? I like your advice. I got to blow dry. I need the hairspray. I want to texturize powder, blow dry from underneath. See, this, this is why I need, I need the women. I need the women, chat. I need a woman. I need help. <laughs> Did that sound creepy? Did that sound creepy, Chad? I think I'm okay. <laughs> I need these women to help me. <laughs> you, of course, you dress as Ghostbusters. He's, he said he's going as Murtaugh, but I don't believe him. I don't believe him for a fucking second. I don't think he's going to grow that mustache. He should have started growing it in August, and he's not doing it, and he's going to fucking half commit. I know what's happening. Hey, I'm, like, I'm, I'm going to be a Riggs without my Murtaugh. I don't like her. He's going to cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want a woman. <laughs> uh, because I thought you were going for early 2000s TJ, amazing atheist. Like, no, no. <laughs> we will see. I'm saying, I, I, if I could achieve, maybe I, I, I might keep, you know, Nair, he's like, you keep it growing forever. I might, I might, just for the hell of it, just to see, like, okay, how long can I actually keep this up? Can she, can she, can she use King Shark's fake mustache, fake mustache. Yeah, we'll see. He, if he fucking does that bullshit fake mustache, I'm gonna be so mad. I'll be like, you didn't fucking commit. I, I kept my promise, Chad. I kept my promise. What did I say? All those months ago. What was it, like in March or something? I don't even remember, but that you, I, you fucking someone recorded it, and I said I will, I will dress up as Martin Riggs. I will do. I'll grow my hair out. I'm not wearing a wig. I said I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna fucking do it. And I'm, I have kept to that promise. So, Corey and Chris, you're gonna get a divorce. It's gonna happen. Thank you, two buddies. Because looking at Naya when he said I was, <laughs> I was. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping for it. I keep my promises, Chad. I kept my promise to dress up as a famous anti-Semitic and racist. I kept, and and did I not keep, am I not keeping that promise, Deadpool, to dress up as that anti-Semitic and racist? I rest my case. I rest my case. <laughs> Do you, though? <laughs> I, need, I need help. I need the lady. You help me with my hair. And then you can go. And then you can go. And then you can go. Oh, my lord, chat. Or he needs to grow. He ain't gonna grow that stash. I'm gonna tell you right. He ain't gonna do it. Cause I'm not kidnapping her. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh lord, I just need one. I need one <laughs> to help me. I need the help. Anyway. Oh, you're gonna be like, no, guess in Halloween cans. I know. Well, a character he played. A character he played, yeah. So. Let's go ahead and get into some Jackbox. And what better way, chat, to do so than play a little murder trivia party? Let's get into a little bit of mortarizing. How about that? Mm hmm. You can always dress as Kurt Russell. That's true, I can. I, people have always said I look like, um, I, I've looked like Kurt Russell. Just read some quick check. Just give me a sec. Sorry. Uh, Divine Miss Klein, do you want me to read this out loud or do you just want me to give uh, this person a shout out? Let, let me know. Let me know. Should me read it out? Okay. I'm going to read it out loud. I'm going to read it out loud. Uh, Jason, good video. Appreciate that. Uh, this is from Divine Miss Klein and she just wanted to give a very kind shout out to Ace Rock. Body Rock Don't Stop chat. Thomas Leaf. You know him. You've heard him. You've seen his, uh, his comments on the stream today. He says, can you please do this for me? Ace Rock saved me after the DT show in Brooklyn. Didn't have my meds on me. Was getting disoriented. Uber app down and no taxis. Ace Rock paid for Uber for me and stayed with me and made sure I was okay. Best, sweetest guy ever. Can you please shout him out on stream, please? Absolutely. Divine Miss Klein. Absolutely. Ace Rock, thank you for being a good guy. That was, that was very kind of you to do. You know, for a, a, a fellow toasty, for a friend, for a member of the Juicy Gang, you uh, you are you are a stand-up gentleman. You are a gentleman, chat, as I would like to say. Cheers and salute to you, good sir. May the wings of liberty lose a feather. You're shaking the pillars of heaven as we speak. Yes, you deserve it, man. 
He's a Chad. Big old Chad. Agreed. Of course. Of course. I, just, I was just reading because I, I want to know if you want me to say it out loud. So, cool. No, that's awesome. That's fucking awesome. Hell yeah. He's, good. He's always been a good guy. Thomas has always been a good guy. Always been a good guy, chat. 